Yes, heat, dust, dreams and drama. That was the story of the prologue yesterday at the 2022 Absa Cape Epic. Hello and welcome to stage number one, day two of the 18th edition of the race that measures all the Absa Cape Epic. Here at Lawrenceford Farm, it is a beautiful day, clear and warm. It's going to get very hot as well as the riders tackle a challenging day one or stage one on day two. Alongside me, Annika Langville and Neil Gardner after a fantastic uh, prologue day here at uh, Lawrenceford yesterday. Annika, if we look back at it, it really had everything, didn't it? Oh yeah, it delivered all the drama that we were hoping and wishing for. Uh, we saw some new faces up there. Uh, we saw, yeah, uh, some of the favorite teams having issues. We really got it all. Yeah, we did uh, have it all. And, and the uh, route that was uh, laid out for the prologue, Neil, was something that we haven't seen before on a, on a prologue, really. A really technical, challenging, uh, with the climbs and some wonderful single track. We're in a beautiful region at the moment, and uh, the course design has really had the pick of the bunch when it came to uh, putting the trails together. And it uh, didn't disappoint. We saw some, uh, some fantastic single track, and we saw the riders really putting their skills to the test. In the men's race, the uh, real talking point, aside from uh, Toyota uh, winning the Toyota Specialized winning that stage, was uh, the drama that befell uh, the uh, world champion Nino Schurter and Lars Forster, losing four and a half minutes. That was the big story of the day for sure, and uh, we didn't expect uh, such a wide gap, but what we did notice in the uh, pre, in just when we had a look at some of the results and some of the time checks, is that Nino Schurter and Lars Fossa didn't lose any time when they were on the gas. So they were pretty much matching, uh, matching the, the fastest time pedal stroke for pedal stroke, apart from when they had drama. Which does set up uh, the remainder of uh, the week, starting, of course, with today's big marathon stage. And in the women's race, um, it, we talked before the event about how wide open it was. And uh, there came uh, Pauline Ferrand-Bravo and Robin de Croo to win the stage, which uh, surprised a lot of us. Mm -hmm. I knew that they would have a good chance, but they went out and delivered uh, on a much higher level uh, than I expected. We personally, I was more looking to the teams that were, were more established, uh, kind of building on the experience from the race. But they came in as newbies and a, a new pairing and they just kind of, you can see they grow throughout the stage yesterday. Well, it was uh, fascinating uh, all the way around the, the prologue, not only in the men's and women's elite races, but of course the hundreds and hundreds of amateurs who've trained so hard to prepare for this uh, 2022 Absa Cape Epic. And yesterday was the day they could get on their bikes and enjoy the trails. Let's reflect on the prologue of the 2022 Absa Cape Epic. at the start of the Absa Cape Epic in Lawrenceford. Two years in the making and um, I have to say the nerves yeah. is there. Finally lining up at the epic um, prologue and we are feeling what? Both privileged and excited to be here.
are feeling great because uh, the hard work is to get here on the start line. Uh, so now that we are, we really enjoy the, the track was amazing. It was a track really to to enjoy the ride. Now the race has starts. It was really awesome though. Hey, the trails are yeah. beautiful. Very dusty. Very uh, dusty. <laughs> and then you actually really enjoy the scenery. Yeah. So yeah, we had fun. The 18th edition of the APSA Cape Epic is underway. The untamed eight-day African mountain bike state race is often referred to as the Tour de France of mountain biking. Hosted by South Africa's Western Cape, this is the most spectacular and prestigious multi-day off-road state race in the world. 530 teams of two from 48 nations are in attendance, including world, Olympic and national champions. The event is also open to amateurs, but it's no walk in the park. They all tackle the same 681 kilometer course, climbing almost 17,000 vertical meters. But the rewards are huge, with world-class trails and picturesque vistas. The route changes every year, and after an eight-year hiatus, the Absa Cape Epic returns to the legendary Lawrenceford Wine Estate. Packed with single tracks, stunning mountain and ocean views, this Somerset West vineyard sets the tone for the seven stages to follow. The prologue is a short, sharp introduction, especially with today's heat predicted to hit 35 degrees Celsius. The time from today's race will come towards the overall classification, and it will decide who will wear the coveted leader's jerseys going into stage one. The prologue is short in length, but not on importance. At just 24 kilometers with 700 meters of climbing, it'll take the top teams around an hour. The first half of the route grinds steadily uphill before the rewards of roller coaster downhills and manicured single track. It is the first real test for the teams to prove their form and get their name in the spotlight. The women's race has the deepest roster of talent the Absa Cape Epic has ever seen. Marathon and stage racing specialist Ariane Luti partners up this year with Amy Wakefield and take third place on a very hot day of racing. The South African pair of Mariska Strauss and Candice Lill, both multiple Cape Epic podium finishers, are battling for the elusive top step in 2022. They take second place in today's prologue. With a time of just under one hour and ten minutes, Team Faces Roller will start tomorrow wearing the African leaders' jerseys. Team BMC MTB Racing with Pauline ferrand prevot and Robin de Groot are on the start line, eagerly waiting to get racing. Pauline ferrand prevot is arguably the world's greatest female cyclist. She has won road, cyclocross, cross-country and marathon world titles. Her partner, Robin de Groot, is a six-time South African marathon champion and has four Cape Epic podium finishes to her name. The BMC pair crossed the finish line just 42 seconds ahead of second place, so they will be sporting the orange women's leaders' jerseys for stage one. The women's podium third goes to Team Simtech ZA, second to Team Faces Roller, and the win to Team BMC MTB Racing. The world's best male mountain bikers are in attendance for the 2022 Absa Cape Epic. Multiple world and Olympic champion Nino Schurter and his partner Lars Forster of Team Scott SRAM have a day they'd rather forget. The 2019 winners suffer two punctures on Schurter's bike. Mechanicals are all part of the wild roller coaster that is the Cape Epic. They quickly repair the wheel and drive hard to limit the damage, but they end up in 15th place, just over four and a half minutes off the winners. Third place goes to Team Canyon Northwave MTB. Current European and world champion Andreas Schirwald, along with world number two Martin Storsek, ride for the second time together. They didn't finish the epic last time, and their speciality is the longer stages. So to finish just one minute behind the winners is a fantastic result. Speed Company Racing with Georg Egger and Lukas Baum put down an incredible ride for their Absa Cape Epic debut. The German young guns ride a faultless race and secure second place on a hot and dusty prologue. Team Toyota 91 Specialized with defending champion Matthew Beers and his new partner Christopher Blevins set the pace today. They push hard from the very beginning of the race, proving that there is no doubt they have their eyes on this year's Cape Epic title. The new pair have a great day on the prologue, crossing the line in just over 58 minutes, giving them a 40-second buffer to second. 
the Toyota 91 Specialized will wear the yellow leader's jerseys for Stage 1 tomorrow. The prologue showed how unpredictable and competitive this untamed race is. All three podium teams finished within one minute of each other. Canyon Northwave MTP in third, Speed Company Racing in second, and a well-deserved win for Team Toyota 91 Specialized. So that is uh, the prologue. This is what lies in store. Grayton is a big transition stage, then two big stages, uh, loops around the Grayton trails. Head off to Stellenbosch, another big uh, stage in Stellenbosch on stage six. And the grand finale will take them to Val de Ville estate from Stellenbosch. Just uh, 68 kilometers, but plenty of challenging climbing to do on that stage, which puts uh, this whole race in perspective. 681 kilometers, just under 17,000 meters of climbing over those uh, seven stages in eight days. And uh, today's stage, over, two, over 92 kilometers and 2,850 meters of climbing, out and back from Lawrence at Weiner stage. It's the first time that the prologue and the stage one have taken place, started and finished at the same venue. And it really does lend itself to a great atmosphere here at the finish, but also a challenging ride as they go around the Helderberg Mountains here. This uh, will certainly, uh, for those of you, for those of them who thought they were sort of just nicely eased into the race of the prologue, this is the reality check, isn't it? Well, I think any riders that have been doing their homework will be daunted by the fact that they've got a super hard day today. It's 92 kilometers, but they've also got another two days that are over 100 kilometers. And all eyes on also on stage six. If you look at the amount of climbing per kilometer, it's going to be a big day out too. So the race will not be over until really until the very, very end. Six out of the eight days is over 2,000 meters of climbing. I mean, as a, as a pro rider, when you see these stats, this is what you do for a living, so you're expecting it to be tough, but does it, does it uh, get, get a reaction from you? What, what is the reaction? Well, first of all, when you enter this race, you know that it's going to be tough no matter what. Um, and if you, on the very first stage, like today, already are looking too far ahead, uh, <laughs> it's not good because there's a lot of pain, a lot of suffering, a lot of kilometers to be ridden still, um, I think it works best to just kind of look at the day ahead and, you know, break it down into smaller pieces. Absolutely. Day for day and uh, for some riders, just uh, go from water point to water point if, uh, further down the field, just getting through uh, the stage because, uh, yes, the elite uh, races will finish it in uh, three to four hours, but the uh, back end of the field will be out there for anything up to nine hours. So it's a, it's a real challenge for every everyone in this field. And that's what uh, the beauty of this event is, is that it's the uh, very best riders in the world and uh, the amateurs, weekend warriors and committed uh, riders who have uh, everyday jobs riding the same course as them. And today's challenging climb, the King's Climb, comes very early on in Lawrenceford Wine Estate. Then they snake through wine farm after wine farm. Beautiful trails laid out on the uh, Helderberg uh, mountain slopes. Dornier trails will lead them into the day's really big, significant climb, the saddle, which will bring them back into uh, the Lawrenceford uh, Basin and the, the valley here, the Helderberg Basin. And they do a big uh, loop around the top of the uh, valley and then drop down through uh, the uh, trails and into Lawrenceford onto the Lawrenceford trails. They had a, a touch of those trails yesterday. They'll maybe one or two of those will be familiar today, but really some fresh trails for them to explore today, but plenty of hard, hard work today. Uh, single tracks all well and good. It's beautiful to ride, but it's, uh, it's, it's ta taxing and challenging on your arms, on your legs, on your mind, everything. Yeah, for sure. And also uh, it's not, most of the time, the single tracks are a little bit more slow going than when you ride on fire roads or gravel roads. So the 92 kilometers of today are for sure going to take some, some energy out of the riders. Yeah, the uh, climbs are significant and they just keep coming uh, through, the, uh, through the day. As I said, King's Climb, uh, virtually out of the blocks, they go straight into the big King's Climb uh, up to 10 kilometers. And then uh, up and down through the Helderberg uh, Valley on the other side, uh, those wine estates, there's uh, plenty of vineyard climbs to deal with there. Well, I think all eyes are on the middle point of the race. That is right about the 43 kilometer mark. There's the saddle climb, and that will be a decisive point in the race. It won't decide the race, but it'll certainly separate the field out. And in fact, just before that, they pass through Waterford Cellar, and there is a sign that says, uh, loosely translated into English, it says, here comes trouble. 
We won't go into uh, the actual uh, wording of the sign, but it's uh, pretty much the uh, around the f uh, surrounding the fact that this is a really, really tricky climb. It's 5.5 uh, kilometers. It's 11 and a half percent average, and it maxes out at almost 25 percent. Traction will be key on this climb. So the riders that are on it, that are uh, really that have, that have prepared themselves physically and mentally well for for this race, they should be fine. And of course, if you are struggling at all at any point in this race, it's going to be a big challenge ahead. Well, five uh, chain rings gives you an idea as to just how challenging today's uh, ride is going to be. And it comes right at the start of uh, the uh, event. So, uh, yeah, it, it's tradition in Absa Cape Epic uh, history that uh, stage one is one of those that uh, puts you straight into the heat of the uh, furnace and, and you know you're in, in uh, one of the toughest events in the world. Well, beautiful morning uh, scenes here at uh, Lawrenceford Wine Estate and uh, the farm. It's not only wine, there's plenty of uh, wonderful fruit produced in this 4,000 hectare uh, piece of land which is uh, nestled nicely in this uh, valley. The water buffalo here at uh, Lawrenceford, they uh, really are special. It's only from uh, those water buffaloes uh, that uh, true mozzarella can be produced. So. That's uh, a spectacular view over the Strand, Somerset West, the Strand into Gordons Bay and uh, the uh, Atlantic Ocean in False Bay. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful uh, conditions. It is a holiday here in uh, South Africa today, so uh, plenty of people will be out uh, enjoying themselves outside and uh, plenty on the mountain slopes, I'm sure, watching the riders as they climb up uh, over King's Kloof. Absolutely stunning uh, morning it is. But, as we had yesterday, and I think it won't perhaps be quite as bad today, but there's going to be heat today for the riders to deal with. And it's uh, very important to keep that factor in mind. So it's not only uh, the course, the route, and, and uh, yeah, uh, the trail ahead of you. It's also dealing with being on top of uh, your nutrition, especially dealing with the heat. Again, trying to, before and after the, the actual um, um, stage of the day, try to stay as much in the shade, cool your body as you can. It really makes a big difference on the recovery. This is uh, a view on the other side of the Helderberg Dome. And uh, these are images, uh, yeah, Lorensford, if you, if you like, on the other side of that uh, mountain range. So literally they're going around the Lorensford Dome and uh, Driekopper, which is the other, those uh, three uh, big mountains in the middle there. So that's where they'll be riding through these vineyards. Plenty of hard work and yep, nutrition and uh, uh, timing that, getting it right today is going to play a critical role for every single rider. Well, let's get down to the uh, start line. Jazz Kushka is our man on the start line, uh, taking the temperature of the riders as they uh, uh, head into today's stage. Uh, let's hear what uh, Jazz has to say and see who he's speaking to. Mark Hubert, Peter Detoy of Mbuka Taktiv, solid day yesterday to finish in the Absa African jersey. Um, how was the day out there yesterday? Yeah, I think it was super hot. Um, we, met, we unfortunately had a puncture yesterday, and although we did have a puncture, minor setback, I think we controlled it well. Um, to, I think we were second off top 10. That's our goal, to get into the top 10, so I think after today, hopefully, we'll be in there. So speaking about the top 10, how do you go about today? Do you watch the front and watch what the front guys are going, doing or do you, do you put in a couple of attacks? There's a lot of climbing early on. Uh, yeah, I think we'll just watch the front and <laughs> don't uh, blow any matches today. Yeah, just watch, watch what the race is doing and try to keep up with them. Have a good day out there, guys. Georg Egger and uh, Lukas Baum, Speed Company Racing, you guys certainly lived up to your name yesterday. Uh, that was the plan, um, clearly. And then today, what's the plan? Are you going off the front again, or are you going to watch the racing and see what happens? Well, we're in a quite comfortable position in second place, um, only 40 seconds behind the leaders. Uh, I know there's another team who had a bit of bad luck yesterday, and I think they are um, in a position where they have to push. So our strategy today is to just, um, yeah, be a bit defensive to see what the, the final brings, and. Um, Let's hope for the best. And you've obviously had a good look at the course. Um, there's quite a bit of climbing and, and some steep, rocky climbs. How, how do you approach all of that? Yeah, we try to hang on the, the fastest team and try to stay with them. Yeah, no attacks from our side, I think. Just uh, be a bit passive and maybe in the end, more attack. Have a good one.
Faces Roller, Mariska Strauss and Candice uh, Lil, you guys had a super strong, consistent performance out there yesterday. Happy with how it all went? Yeah, for sure. That's the plan for today as well, so looking forward to it. Lots of climbing early on. How are you going to approach that? Yeah, I mean, when there's a race with such climbing in the beginning, you just have to go. I mean, there's no point sitting around, so yeah, <laughs> we will try to make it hard, see if people come with us um, and take our tactics from there. And it's a public holiday out here in South Africa today. Um, obviously, great to have the hometown support. Of course, yes. It's so cool that it's a public holiday, actually, because normally during the week it's a bit more quiet. But yeah, awesome to have the spectators back in sports in general and so many people cheering for us. And the racing in the women's race this year is super tight. Um, do you expect it to be quite tactical through the week? Yeah, for sure. It's, it's definitely tight racing, but it's fun and it's good for entertainment. So let us entertain you. Enjoy it. Thank you. Thanks. Um, you're in yellow. How do you approach today? Do you just play it easy and watch the, the other guys, or do you go off the front a little bit in the early climbs? Uh, we'll definitely be watching as well. I mean, watching and defending. We definitely don't want to be sitting at the back. So, yeah, we just there's a lot of single tracks that we need to make sure we're in there first. And the single track obviously suits both of you guys? Yeah, Chris is obviously a weapon on the single track, and um, I just need to try and follow his wheels. So. Enjoy it. PMC Racing, Robin de Groot and uh, Pauline Provo, you guys are in um, orange. How do you attack today or do you sit back and watch the front? Um, yeah, uh, we know what our objectives are for the race. Um, yeah, for us it's about the experience together and just learning and we definitely take it as it comes. We see how things are happening out there and we have to be able to adapt and, and communicate and see, see how things unfold. Of uh, the... Uh, the protagonists of the men's and women's races as the men head off on stage number one. 92 kilometers, the yellow jerseys on Toyota 91 specialized uh, shoulders. Uh, Christopher Blevins and Matt Beers, the two men uh, up front. But as we heard there, Georg Eger and Lucas Baum, really speed racing uh, team. They really are a team of, of shaken things up here today, uh, uh, yesterday, and uh, will be uh, in the forefront today, I think. It's every single year we, uh, we look down the list of, uh, of, of starters and we think, which, what's going to be the surprise this year? Who are the guys that are going to really blow up the prologue and, uh, and, and surprise us throughout the race? And uh, I have to admit that we didn't spot this team. They really are the dark horses. They, uh, yeah, they came out and laid down a time. They started 13th last uh, yesterday and their time stood up until the... Uh, the leaders finally uh, bettered them. The women, uh, elite to women, rolled off 15 teams here within the orange leaders' jerseys. Team BMC, BMC mountain biking, Pauline Ferran Prevo and Robin de Groot, a team that had uh, paired, never ridden together. And Pauline has a little uh, stage race uh, experience in mountain biking, but yesterday. Well, despite the early images of the, the gap between the two riders, they laid it down yesterday. Robin de Groot is fresh from uh, not having ridden a great deal over the last while. I suppose uh, it'll be interesting to see how she uh, goes through the rest of the week, starting with today's big uh, marathon stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could really see how they, they kind of adapted well to each other uh, yesterday. And the question mark, of course, is how will they do in the long run? We know that they are very strong when it comes to these short uh, effort here at the beginning of the race and how how will it all go during the week we are very excited to see that but they look they look good they look on form they look uh, motivated and eager to race and that's uh, that's important absolutely the uh, south african pair of uh, candace lill and mariska strauss in the uh, red absa african jerseys for the women's race they're uh, nicely positioned there Ariane Luti and Amy Wakefield were on the uh, podium yesterday as well. Live Cycling have two teams here. They'll look to uh, come on strong today in the marathon stages. I think that's their speciality. And, of course, uh, the two uh, specialized riders for in the women's race, Sofia uh, gomez Fun and Hayley Batten, will uh, perhaps come into their own uh, as the race progresses. Mm. For them, it's the first time um, racing together as a team, and they also kind of have to know how to communicate, how to work together, um, and how to really... Because we saw that they were off the podium yesterday, and if they want to have chances in the overall GC, they need to find out and learn how to manage the combined forces uh, between them. And of course, if one of the 
the two uh, members of the team are feeling stronger, you need to, yeah, you know, need to help your partner to get through this as, as well as possible. So there's a little bit of a job lying there. Caught a glimpse there of the uh, men's uh, group all together, just uh, starting to ease into that uh, first big climb, the King's Climb, taking them up over the shoulder of the Helderberg Mountains with the sun uh, just breaking through on the peaks of the Helderberg Dome. Beautiful sight as uh, the riders make their way up uh, this climb. The early stages still, but as every image we come back to the men, you see the pace just starting to ramp up a little and the gaps and the, the, the starting to uh, open up and uh, stretch this group out. Well, we did predict that uh, Scott Sram would be would be super aggressive today. They lost four minutes and 38 seconds. This is Nino Schoto and Lars Foster. And uh, we predicted that the also predicted that the rest of the field would be dreading the early parts of the race and dreading the pace that <laughs> Nina Schurter and Lars Foster will inevitably be setting to gain back that time. We know they're fully capable of it. They were matching the, uh, the, the, the fastest time uh, yesterday. They were matching it pretty much pedal stroke for pedal stroke, apart from their mechanicals. Very hard to judge that because, of course, they did benefit from the rest, so-called rest of having the mechanical. But still, it's clear they are on the pace and they will make today count for themselves to start chipping into that lead that Matt Beers and uh, and uh, his team, his teammate Christopher Blevins, uh, did so well to create on the prologue. Fantastic performance from the team that uh, really is the favorite of this year and uh, undisputed favorite, but of course, never write off Nino Schurter and his teammate Lars Foster. They have won the race. Nino Schurter's won the race twice and once with Lars Foster, so it's a tried and tested combination. Short while later, the uh, Masters, the Grand Masters, the Mixed, the Xaro categories all uh, rolled away. The A-Batch riders here, some uh, highly, highly decorated riders in this uh, bunch of uh, riders. And of course, many, many deeply committed uh, and very, very strong and well-trained and prepared amateurs. Well, they're in good company. The, uh, we looked at the results sheet yesterday. There was uh, several former winners of the race. And it just seems that they just—they <laughs> really want to come back and get more out of this um, out of this experience. They obviously enjoyed themselves racing as, uh, as the, in the men's category and the women's category elite. And of course, this year they are back for more. Back with the women and uh, the South African pair of Lil and Strauss on the front there, with uh, Batten and the Gomez VFN on their wheel, and then the orange jerseys. Well, they will do uh, much of that. Just uh, watching. Uh, Early on, keeping a watching brief from behind as we watch Haley Preen, the uh, private client holdings rider. Her partner is uh, Marie Ravi, just ahead of her there. They had a good day yesterday. Fantastic day. And they really are looking to be one of the top five teams of the race. And we early, even early in the race, they're pretty much on the pace with all of the time checks. And Marie Ravi and Haley Preen had a disappointing year in 2021 when Haley Preen broke her arm and had to abandon the race. So very, uh, very much... Uh, all to prove for this uh, pairing of Marie Rabi and Haley Preen. And here we see early uh, images uh, of the women's field going up the first climb. And we can see here Amy Wakefield having a gel. And it looks like uh, this pair is having uh, troubles uh, following the speed of, of the teams ahead of them. Uh, so we'll see if they will kind of uh, manage to claw back that little gap during this uh, long stage of the day. It's a hard day awaiting them. And this is uh, what uh, many of the riders feared, going to the front very early on when a man like Nino Schurter loses uh, so much time on that first day. You can bet he's going to lay it down on the remaining days. And uh, here he is right at the sharp end, last forced on his wheel. It's uh, Eger in uh, company of the yellow jerseys just behind, but Nino Schurter well, he'll be hurting from yesterday's mechanical issues. Uh, four and a half minutes are pretty calm at the end of it. That, that happens. It's mountain biking. And, uh, but then you can bet a man of his uh, uh, championship quality will be uh, hurting. Wakefield and Ariane Luti starting to lose contact with that uh, leading women's bunch, it seems on the uh, climb and it is a steep very varied climb you saw uh, open roads some uh, jeep track and then it gets uh, fairly gnarly uh, as it gets to the top of uh, the climb here king's Kloof, uh, farm is up here they ride through the beautiful helderberg at nature reserve as well which is uh, just uh, sort of uh, bridges between lawrenceford and uh, somerset west having started on uh, the bottom of the climb this is uh, 
Marie Rabi now and Hayley Preen at the back of that lead group of women riders and it's clear that Wakefield and Luti are not in that group. Mm, but you can see the rest of the top teams still matching in each other quite well and the BMC, MCB racing team riding a little bit de defensively here at the beginning, uh, just happy to sit in and, and follow the pace of the others and we could see uh, yeah, Mariska um, and her partner, they were really happy to take uh, the lead today and set the pace and, and dictate the race. And we'll see if that will be rewarded uh, in the end. This is all uh, from earlier in the day, of course, uh, because the riders set off, uh, uh, what, nearly two hours ago, the uh, elite men. And this is flowing down the Helderberg trails in the company of uh, Bulls Media e-bike suggest this could be Thomas Dietsch but uh, nevertheless we'll follow the riders down these incredible trails and uh, these are well established trails and a little uh, uh, slip and that's what can happen very very quickly mm. down uh, they go but not too much damage these uh, trails in the shadow now having uh, been in the sunshine on the other side of the mountain and that's watch the thing, you need, you. To stay watch out, watch out, you need to stay fully focused all the way through out these uh, eight days. You can be very, very strong, but if you just lose focus at the wrong time, it can be devastating for your race. Absolutely. The uh, trails are technical. There's plenty of uh, switchbacks. The surfaces in this, at this time of year in the heat of summer here. Whoa, Nino Schurter. Oh, is he enjoying that? He is. Clearly he's in, uh, in good spirits, that's good to see. Uh, excited for today and yeah, it's a, it's a good start because they need to, if they want to have any chances in the GC, they need to start clawing back some of that time that they lost yesterday. Just loving these trails, he does know them very, very well. He spent a lot of time in this part of the world over the last number of years and uh, he would have ridden these trails time and time again. And I mean, he's a master of preparation as well as racing. He's, he can read a race fantastically and uh, also he's uh, highly experienced in getting himself ready for those races so that, uh, that preparation is all about acclimatizing and of course spending time spending the winter or his winter his swiss winter would be spent uh, very constructively getting used to the trail conditions well this is what uh, a lot of that ride will be like we've just seen the sort of open single track then the forested uh, uh, little single track as they go through the ravines and then the vineyards They'll get this. Nice downhill sections as uh, Schurter and Foster lay it down. They drop a seat post down, flying down these uh, vineyard trails. And then quite often, as is happening now, the right hand, and they may well head back up them. There's plenty of those uh, tough, uh, loose vineyard climbs to come for them today. Hans Becking on the back of this group, and uh, it had uh, finally established itself. I think five teams in this uh, lead group, the... Uh, Leaders were there, the Scott Schramm pair were there, Buff Megamo were there, that's uh, Becking and uh, Diaz, and uh, the Speed Company Racing were in that group, and one other team that will come to mind shortly. But there they are, flying through on a beautiful day, it really is a spectacular day in the Western Cape, but uh, turning on the charm here in uh, South Africa. Up through uh, countless... Uh, Farms, wine farms, Neutredacht, uh, they've been uh, Zettler, Eikendal, as well as Guardian Peak. The famed Ernie Els uh, wine estate, going to uh, one of South Africa's greatest ever professional golfers, Ernie Els. And uh, he's got trails on his farm. Alta, Bilton, Stellenzicht, they'll get to. And then uh, the second checkpoint will be at Dornia. So in that uh, lead group, I think five teams uh, together there. Maybe maybe six. I'm just looking at that uh, group as they swing around into one of these uh, steep uh, vineyard climbs. This is Hans Becking on the Ernie Els trails. He and Jose Diaz won three stages yesterday. Uh, last year at least. It feels like yesterday. It was only five months ago. But uh, they'll be fairly pleased with their prologue uh, result yesterday when they finished in eighth place two minutes and 46 seconds behind the uh, leaders just uh, the top three teams a minute and six seconds between toyota 91 specialized speed company racing and canyon north wave 
of Andreas Seerwald and Martin Storsek, and they're the other team in that group. That's uh, Fabian Ravensteiner, and uh, just ahead of him, it looks like it may be one of the uh, I'm going to say one of the uh, specialized team, but perhaps not, who so may have taken a fall there. But this is the front of the race, and Georg Eger and Lucas uh, Baum are taking it to the established uh, hierarchy in the Absa Cape Epic here in no uncertain terms. In their first race, great to see. Yeah, it's, it's really great to see uh, some new people, some new faces at the front, and they, they're not hiding. They're really just there. I think we also, at the very beginning of the, the stage, we caught a glimpse of the team Santa Cruz with uh, Maximum Rudd and Keegan Swenson in the black, predominantly black kit uh, being up there. Good to see them uh, uh, up there as well. Yeah, they were 2 minutes 13 back after the uh, prologue yesterday, having finished in fifth place behind Andre Fischneck and Yuri Ragnoli of uh, Scott Sram Dewey, who were the uh, best finishing of the Scott teams yesterday after the uh, problems that befell Nino Schurter and uh, Lars Foster. Dusty it will be today, as uh, this uh, we feel this entire Absa Cape Epic will be, because there's not a lot of rain predicted over the next uh, seven days here in the Western Cape. And that's always one of the tricky parts, these early morning, morning starts. Uh, very dusty, and if you ride in a big group like this, a rider number seven, eight, uh, nine in this group will have so much dust, and with the low uh, sun hanging and like kind of putting the the light, you know, uh, from the side, it's, it's sometimes vision is actually really, really tricky. And riding a trail that you've not ridden before, um, you need to you need to be very focused. Oh, we can see images there. Nina Schurter, third wheel, and his partner Lars Foster close behind. And monitored closely by the oh we yes problem earlier yes. with drama more drama for the Scots Ram team Nina Schurter puncture for uh, the uh, for the world champion and we also also see for Eger and, and Baum Baum also having issues it's a similar it's not they're not together at all in terms of uh, uh, teammates but uh, it just seems coincidental that they had an issue at exactly the same time perhaps taking um, an opportunity at the right point in the trails to stop but they're on their way but leaving behind Scott's Ram not and having a good time fixing that puncture no no this is not an easy puncture you see it's a complicated one even because the last thing you want to do really in these uh, rough thorny uh, terrains is to have to put a tube into your tire uh, first of all if you need to put a tube into your tire you need to make sure that there are no thorns on the inside you need to kind of you know take your hand and scrape up off all the thorns that would be there inside. Um, what I often did was, if I were, of, if we were to mount a spare tube, we would have a spare tube prepared with already like sealant inside mm -hmm. of the tube. So if you kind of had thorns going into your tire again, or there were some thorns that you didn't realize was there, the the actually the sealant in the tube would kind of hopefully hopefully seal uh, the hole. But this is not ideal at all. Um, and if you I would suggest at the next feed zone you must swap that wheel for a fresh wheel. Catastrophic here for yes. Scott Schramm. Absolutely yes, yes, yes. terrible. They, they really are leaking time. Lars Forster and Nino Schurter after the disaster yesterday. Yet more trouble today for the Scott Schramm team, the 2019 winners. And the yellow jerseys. And uh, that is Matt Beers there. And just behind him, Georg Eger and uh, Lucas Baum. So they got back in touch yeah. with the leaders, at least the leaders of the race, but up front, right up ahead on the trails, it looks like it's Christopher Blevins having left his teammate way behind. Let's get a check on exactly which which partner that, okay, so we have okay, we have the yellow jerseys very much in contention still. And then uh, we also would like to check where Canyon Northway of the, probably the third favorite team on the, in the race so far. And if they're having a incident free day, it all plays into their hands. Well, it's all uh, come back after that initial uh, thrill of going down the Heldenberg Trails when about four or five teams or six teams got away. Now they've all concertinaed back. And, of course, one of the big glaring emissions from that group is the Scots Ram pair of Nino Schurter and uh, Lars Forster with their punctures and uh, troubles further back down the field. Now, the question remains, what happened to that backup team? Nino Schurter and uh, Lars Forster have a dedicated backup team and that is uh, none other than um, 
Andrew Frischenicht and uh, Ragnoli. And uh, it's interesting that they didn't stop to assist with uh, that puncture. Yeah, the bull's in there as well. And uh, there's Nino Schurter with uh, Lars Forster at the back of this. And now the long, uh, hard grind to pull themselves back. How will this uh, affect them? Uh, not necessarily uh, uh, going forward to the rest of the week, but today with Forster working really hard. He's stuck behind these uh, riders. You can almost sense he wants to try and get past them. Right there now. he goes. Opens up and he can kind of pass. Of course, when you pass on trails like as narrow as these, you're passing on rougher ground and you can't necessarily see what's underneath. At these speeds, it's not quite so critical, but if he is riding over rougher ground, there is a further risk of them getting another puncture. Tiago Ferreira is the man uh, ahead of him, a 2016 world champion, twice a silver medalist in the year marathon as well, and a stage winner here at the Absa Cape. Forster's uh, got past and will try and link up with. You know, Schurter, who's a little bit further up this uh, long and uh, not that steep, but certainly challenging uh, terrain-wise uh, climb up through this uh, lovely uh, slopes of the Heldberg Mountains. There is Schurter, and he's not holding back. He certainly isn't. And these climbs don't appear significant on the, on the profile when we look at them compared to the likes of the King's Climb and, of course, the Saddle Climb. But you can see how challenging they really are. Well, there's a sight. Uh, speed company racing off the bike uh, and pushing up this very, very steep section. And once you're off here, very difficult to get back on and remount and, and it pedal. Is, it is. It's, uh, it's kind of impossible when it's that steep to find a spot where you can kind of uh, get traction and then kind of keep in and get going again. I uh, don't know what the issue was, why he had to get off. Um, but anyways, he'll need to find a, a flat spot to get on with his bike again. So this is live footage. Uh, Simon Schneller here with the Schuber behind him. And then the Scots Ram pair of Schurter and uh, his partner Forster. And Schneller and uh, Huber had a slightly disappointing day yesterday. It looks like they had mechanical. We haven't had a chance to catch up with them to see what happened. But they were initially in the uh, time checks. They were quite far behind, but they seem to make up their time. But uh, you know, Schurter very much in the mode of nursing Lars Forster through this. They don't look like it's as urgent as uh, we would expect from the favorite team in the race. This is the saddle climb. This is the climb that's going to take them uh, to the summit of this and then drop back into Lawrence. But look at this, every one of them off their bikes. It is such rough terrain and a very, very difficult uh, traction here. Andreas Servolt there, Hans Becking, Svensson and Marat in there as well for Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz is having a good day, mm. it looks like today. Um, that's a good sign. Good to see. Um, I think they have uh, great expectations of today. Maxi Marat is a seasoned campaigner, and of course his partner, um, Keegan Swenson, is, uh, is not, he doesn't have a huge palmares when it comes to stage races, but he has done extremely well at the Swiss Epic really early on in his career. He won a stage for the 2018 Swiss Epic. So all eyes on that team to do well during the week. This is going to play into their hands, and we have the Absa Africa jersey passing us in this very tricky climb. It's extremely challenging section, the Lawrenceford saddle, and really exposed and beautiful from the air as we see the, very, the world's very best. And significantly, we can see Hans Becking ominously at the front of the race. And just up front there, hard to catch a visual of them exactly. Oh, there's more drama on the trail. So Andres Sivolt and uh, Martin Stosek also uh, up uh, at the top there. Going to be keeping a close eye out for the yellow jerseys. This there is uh, the yellow jersey of Matt Beers. And uh, on the bike now with our Bulls Media e-bike, you can get an idea of just how rough and harsh this terrain is. This is not a trail that's ridden at any other time. And... Uh, there's no way you can ride up here at any other time, let alone these professional riders who are allowed to ride up here can't ride up there. They're having to walk up there, but it is not a, a public uh, trail at all. Well, the race has hit fever pitch really early on in the race. We're hardly halfway through that first stage. And already we could say now that there is absolute chaos out in the trails and to try and make sense of it as a, even from our point of view, from the best vantage point possible, it's difficult to really understand exactly what's happening 
and you can imagine what it must be like for the riders who've either been caught behind if they've had mechanicals or even if they're out front what is actually happening behind they will get word when they reach the water points exactly what the time gaps are and what is actually happening but they will might not even know that Nino Scherter is having great troubles with his tires and that uh, he wasn't backed up by his uh, his dedicated backup team yeah, there was uh, no sign of them at that stage, unless uh, you know, we, we may not have seen, but he's, he may have said, look, go, you, they went past and go ahead, we'll get to the to tech zone, which uh, they would have passed through before this climb. So one would uh, perhaps uh, guess they may have uh, swapped a wheel there. But what we see right now is uh, Canyon Northwave and Buff Megamo really separating themselves from the rest of the, the field. Uh, early on uh, on stage one these two teams uh, last year kind of mm. caught momentum midway through uh, the week and now already on stage one we see them riding so strong and kind of separating themselves uh, from the rest so yeah it's going to be interesting to see if they can keep that momentum because i have a feeling that they're not going to get weaker throughout the, no. the week he's a marathon specialist yes. uh, diaz on the front there becking is his partner in the Dutch Marathon Champions jersey and Sivolt in the World Champions jersey, the Marathon Champions jersey and Martin Storsek. Those are the four riders that uh, are up ahead and then the uh, chase group behind them contains the uh, leaders, Toyota 91 Specialized, as well as Santa Cruz in the, that group as well. And is that just four riders there, I think? And then now uh, Media E-Bike indeed, Thomas Deitch mm -hmm. behind them there. So yeah, we've got uh, four teams uh, separated by uh, about a couple hundred meters between those uh, leading two and this, the second group of two. And of course the big story so far if you've just joined us is that Nino Schurter has had a puncture on the stage. We thought that their travail, their bad day was behind them uh, having lost four minutes and 38 seconds on the prologue due to a puncture and a mechanical but today their troubles keep on plaguing them and in the Scott SRAM camp there'll be some change of strategy no doubt tonight as to how to approach the rest of the race. We did look at that first time or that second time check It's at the water point at the 34 kilometer mark. Some significant teams were absent, notably the Bulls were absent from that very front group, the group of elite riders, but in that group was De Toy and Joubert and Buko Giant at ninth spot past that checkpoint. So all to play for and we are also keeping a very close watch on speed company racing having had a blinder of a prologue yesterday fantastic day out for the surprise team uh, Iga and baum well it's just uh, a really remote part of uh, today's stage this the saddle that uh, takes the riders over from uh, well, the sort of stellenbosch uh, wine farm area on the uh, Northern slopes over back into the Lawrenceford and going to the front, Andreas Sirvalt, the world marathon champion, has put the power down with Martin Storsek, his partner, on his wheel. Drew Storsek a year ago, or Signa, big button, five months ago, who took ill after the pair won stage three in Tilbach and couldn't start stage four. And thereafter, the team just behind them, Hans Becking, Jose Diaz, took hold of the race. They'd lost a lot of time due to mechanicals early on and won three stages in a row. So this is a significant move by the world champion and his partner and uh, Becking and Diaz behind them. And from the front, you can hardly recognize that world championships jersey of Seervolt because it is so covered in dust and just an indication of what the trails are like and uh, what he's been through in the early part of the race. They all say that it's special. The epic is special when you're racing it as a professional in the very front of the bunch because of the, the jostling for position, the difficulty in getting into the whole shot in the trails to get into the single track first, a big group uh, riding at, uh, at really the, the, the fastest pace possible. And uh, we're behind Matt Beers now. And uh, he's in touch, but uh, it's uh, not an easy trail, but his day will come later on. His, uh, his time will come later on when the trails open out and he can really put down the power and ply his trade as a marathon specialist. They're together with the Santa Cruz pair of Marat and Svensson are the uh, Toyota 91 Specialized pair. There they are. And uh, it's a hard grind for them, but they're reaching the, the top of the climb now. Significantly, Beers and Blevins uh, started the day with a minute and six seconds on Andreas Sirvolt and Martin Storsek after the pro prologue yesterday. Uh, so 
They're reaching not quite the halfway stage of the, uh, the of the uh, stage now, and uh, Stosek and uh, Sirvold will be trying to eke out as much as they can of a lead over this pair as they descend now. Yeah, look how rough the conditions are out here. Uh, the pace is, is quite slow simply because uh, the, the terrain is that rough. It's not smooth, it's uh, not giving you anything for free. You really have to work whether it's uphill or downhill. You have to stay so focused and yeah, it's a lot of hard work. Now a little bit of a smooth road. I'm sure they will just enjoy that for a moment before they head into the next rough section. And just to give you an idea more or less where they are in the race right now, they're approximately at the 50 kilometer mark so the entire stage is 92 kilometers, so they're past the halfway point. They will be very soon approaching the Lawrenceford Saddle water point, and uh, this is where they'll be able to get their race nutrition and pick up the bottles that have been pre-made for them and uh, as they campaign for the rest of the day and head down the trails. They will have already reached the highest point in the race. They have got one or two climbs to go still, not insignificant climbs, some of them very steep, but uh, They've tackled most of the challenging parts of the route already as they head down towards Lawrenceford again on today's loop stage. So of the top five teams from uh, yesterday's uh, prologue, the only absentee in this uh, group when we uh, look at the leaders is the Scotsram duo team of uh, Andre Frischnecht and uh, Yuri Ranioli. Whether they have stopped at some stage to, to help, we're not entirely sure. We didn't see them uh, in that uh, earlier footage of the problems affecting the Schurter and Foster, but they may have at some stage, and that's perhaps uh, explaining why they're not with this group, or they're trying to help them back. But uh, the rest of them, Beers and Blevins of Toyota 91 Specialized are there as Marco Hubert is uh, one half of the Apps African Leaders uh, team, uh, Team Mbuko type dev uh, presented by Giant, and uh, he's riding with Peter de Toy, and they are flying up this climb uh, very impressively indeed, although he's looking around for his partner, and that's uh, the uh, backup team for Canyon Northway, Christian Heineck and Matu Sulman. Also in the mix there is a Christian Heineck, a former winner here of the Apps of Cape Epic. Wonderful to have people up there cheering them along on this very brutal climb. A dedicated Here to they come. Oh, there we go. That's Lars Foster on the front. Dino Schurter behind, letting Lars Foster set the pace so as not to go too hard and blow him up. But this pain and suffering on Lars Foster's face is evident. They are on another bad day. And it'll be fascinating to see how they handle today and how they handle themselves and uh, also what their tactics will be for the rest of the week. Well, Peter de Toy uh, has lost some time as well. Marco Hubert stopped at the top of that climb there, waiting for his uh, partner. Not sure if he had uh, problems. Meanwhile, on the other side of the mountain, it is Sirvolt and uh, Storsek who are pinning their ears back down this uh, rugged, rough uh, single track. So they'll have a slight downhill here, and uh, you can see from the single track that it's pretty steep stuff. And uh, then they'll have a quick kick upwards towards the Lawrenceford Saddle water point. And that's the time check for we will get a good idea of exactly what kind of damage has been done by the race. In fact, not just by the other riders, but the race and the course will have done the damage to the field. And of course, the fierce pace set by the uh, surprise team, Eggers and Baum. This uh, making their way up uh, that climb, it really is uh, backbreaking stuff. Back with the women's race now. There's a fight. And yeah. uh, Gomez uh, Villafan and Haley Button. Looking like they're having a really good day today, uh, setting a good pace. Uh, do we have any time checks on the team? Well, well we saw them pass through the Dornier Estate time check at, uh, at 34 kilometers. And significantly, 91 Songo Specialized reached that time check first over. There we go. So they're 1 minute 54 ahead of Faces Roller. So significant for the South Africans. They have lost almost two minutes to the 91 Songo Specialized team. And even more significant in fourth spot, Three minutes back off the pace is BMC MTB Racing already out of that jersey virtually if the race were to stop now. Looks like uh, tables have turned a little bit today. Uh, unfortunately for 91 Stunker Specialized, they were not even on the podium yesterday. And now we see them flipping everything upside down and now they're taking the lead. Um, that's, it's good to see. It keeps the racing very open. It's very dynamic, and uh, this is uh, perhaps expected. This is where their strength lies, I think, Sofia Gomez, Ulefan, uh, and uh, Haley Batten with the longer marathon stages. 
Well, sometimes it's hard. Uh, that's something that I've been thinking about myself a lot. It's like you often tend to like categorize uh, riders as a marathon specialist, as a, a short track specialist, a XE or whatever. But you see here, it doesn't always uh, matter because um, it's what you feel comfortable with on the day. And um, you can see someone like Haley Batten. She won a short track uh, World Cup uh, just last year. Uh, that's a relatively short effort. And now she's here leading the first real marathon stage. So you can't always um, put too much into those labels that you tend to put on people. Anyways, they're looking like they're having a good day and it's awesome to see them flying. Lorenzo Leroux and uh, Leander Tobangunya, the Fair Tree Imperial Canadel pair, former winners of the Xara category, just going through there on this uh, brutal climb. And uh, here come uh, the race leaders on today's stage in the women's race. And uh, bending it gives you an idea of just how tough this uh, climb is, how steep it is in this section here. Mm. And it's uh, slow rolling. You really need to to look far ahead to keep uh, yeah, your bike on the right direction and, and keep the traction on your rear wheel. And you can see here the two riders are kind of settling into the pace that suits them best. Uh, sometimes if the, if the climb is super steep, um, ideally you always want to stay close to your partner. But if you stu struggle keeping the bike upright because you have to like, go a little bit slower than what you would prefer, sometimes it makes sense to just open up a little bit of a gap like you see here so each rider can ride the pace that suits them the best. Well, perhaps halfway up this uh, tough climb, Gomez very fine from Argentina, but based and has been living in the United States for many years and Haley Batten is uh, very much uh, the up and coming uh, face of uh, the United States in terms of uh, mountain biking. There's a lot of talent, uh, there's a lot of talent coming out of the States. But wonderful to see her taking the racing on here. We talked about it yesterday, but Haley Bat Batten did, uh, she won the Swiss Epic with, uh, with uh, Annika. And you had a good experience with her at that race. You got a good a good opportunity to see how what kind of a racer she is and, and how those skills transferred. Mm. She's a very com complete rider, in my um, opinion. One of her strengths definitely is her ability to ride any trail blindly and fast. For me, it, it made all the difference having to follow her wheel down some, some unknown trails uh, because she was just so good at constantly picking the right lines. Well, that is what uh, awaits them, the Lawrenceford uh, Saddle uh, uh, Checkpoint and uh, Hydration Station. So uh, there you can see the two signs there, UCI women, UCI men. And uh, they've got their bottles positioned there. The riders will sweep in there and uh, dispose of their used bottles, the empty bottles, pick up those that have been uh, uh, fueled up for them and they head off. Those are pre-made drinks by their trade teams. They will have exactly the right, the, their favorite nutrition that is specifically made for that point in the race. It is that scientific in terms of fueling themselves up for the race. And we see we're with the, the lead men and it will be fascinated to see what the time gaps are at that, at that uh, water point at the 53 kilometer mark. They're on the other side of the mountain that uh, Haley Batten and uh, uh, Sofia Gomez Viafan are riding up to the summit of and uh, they're doing a fantastic job here, the uh, pair of uh, 91 Sunday Specialized. They're putting uh, time into their rivals and clawing back time lost on the uh, prologue yesterday. As we saw a little bit earlier, the race leaders in the women's race have uh, leaked a lot of time and uh, are perhaps feeling a little bit of the uh, pressure. But uh, it's a long week and uh, as we know that uh, Robin de Kruert has not had a lot of racing in her legs. So uh, it'll be perhaps just settling into uh, the uh, demands of a really, really long, hard stage today. Exactly. And there were question marks as to uh, Robin de Hoort's form. And of course, she put that to rest as soon as they posted that time and uh, that first checkpoint time and the prologue yesterday. But that um, early season form is difficult to judge. When you're fresh and you ride a prologue, it's easier perhaps to, to go really deep. But there's no hiding on a stage like this, 92 kilometers with 2,850 meters of climbing. They will be found out very soon if their training and their preparation has not been completely 100% up to scratch. 
Well, some wonderful single track high up on the uh, mountain here, these uh, leaders, and they are looking like they're opening up a significant gap here. Martin Storsek and Andreas Sevolt. There comes Becking and uh, Diaz. are not quite as big as uh, initially it looked, but uh, enjoying these uh, what look like fresh cut trails. Well, they'll be reaching the uh, water point very soon. And there is a bit of a kick up. And here we go. That's, this is Martin Stozak and Andreas Sievold. When this team first appeared on the start list last year in 2021, we really expected great things from them. They did win stage three. And that night on stage three, Martin Stozak developed a stomach bug and was unable to continue the following day. So they have put that disappointment behind them and they are charging today. We're seeing Hans Becking going into that water point and... Uh, just check on exactly what those time checks are. Hans Becking and Jose Diaz are 10 seconds back off the Canyon North Wave team. Only two teams past that water point so far. And a long way still to go in this race. So uh, we may have seen the uh, Blevins beers combination struggling a little bit, losing a bit of time on the uh, steep sections of this climb here. But there'll be moments, uh, there'll be time later on in the stage to uh, try and claw some of that time they may have uh, lost back now. you can see here just mm. how tough and steep this climb is Sophia really has to dig deep to just kind of you know keep her bike uh, going uh, it looks like from what we see now that Haley is probably the one feeling a little bit stronger in this pairing and she needs to kind of take on that role and that responsibility uh, knowing that she maybe is a little bit of a, uh, the stronger one in the pairing and kind of helping Sophia uh, as much as she can. It almost looks a little bit like the scenario we saw yesterday with Pauline being the stronger one in, in their team and, and kind of constantly opening up a little bit of a gap uh, to her partner. And ideally, that's not what you want. If you are feeling the stronger one in the team, uh, especially on a hard climb like that, I, I can only speak from personal experience, but it always helps to have the so-called weaker uh, team member of the team setting the pace at the front, uh, because then you don't have to, you're not forced uh, to go deep into the red in order to keep uh, the rear wheel of your partner. But different strategies, and it's still a long week and a lot, a lot to experience and a lot of time to grow together as a team and really perfectionize your teamwork. Well, it's Stosek and uh, Sivolt in the men's race here as they're heading now around the, the back of this uh, Helderberg Basin on the uh, high line of the uh, Contour Road. And that's Sivolt behind uh, Stosek with the Dutch champion Hans Becking and Jose Diaz from Portugal. All together at the front of this race, about a minute and ten and collectively ahead of the race leaders, Toyota 91 Songo Specialized, Toyota 91 Specialized, that's Blevins and Beers. So, in effect, they're the leaders on the, uh, of the race on the road right now, are Sivolt and uh, Storsek, because they were one minute and six seconds down at the start of the day, but much will change. Oof, it, this is brutally steep, brutally steep. Traction here is so difficult, I can tell you. And you can see Haley here just like all the way bent over a handlebar just to kind of keep the front end on, uh, of her bike down. Well, that ride is uh, littering the side of the trail. Philemon Sabona and Jan Manchoya, the uh, two men uh, just walking up that uh, trail alongside them, the Absa C2R pair. It's incredible effort and fantastic riding here by Haley Batten and uh, Sofia Gomez Villefan leading the women's race as they reach the summit of this uh, saddle climb. Well, not quite the summit, but uh, closing in on it. They'll turn up another switchback. Mm. It's fantastic to, to see. They're clearly having a good day today, feeling good. Uh, initially, I thought it would be the, the Faces um, team, the Faces roller, uh, kind of uh, setting uh, the pace here today because uh, they were quite eager at the beginning, looking like, OK, this is our day. Now we're not going to hold back. We're just going to go out there and set the pace. And uh, yeah, they weren't actually able to follow the pace of this team. If they could, clearly they would have. Well, let's hope they haven't had any mechanicals or anything like that. We, it's hard to tell exactly what's going on on the trail, but uh, they were lying over two minutes back, faces roller off of that leading team we just saw there. And significantly, this is the yellow jersey. These are the chasing teams. So we are early looking at uh, Canyon Northwave 
and Buff Megamo in the lead and one minute back at that time check Sam, Team Santa Cruz and those are the riders in the black behind Toyota 91 Specialized leaving it up to Matt Beers and Christopher Blevins to chase the uh, yellow jersey are on the back foot looking to make back that time and make back that gap that Canyon North Wave have been opening up with Buff Megamo and clearly it's all up to 91 Songo Specialized to chase we've got a time check there and significantly, Willia Pirelli, in fact, both Willia Pirelli teams are in touch. And they, the true marathoners are coming to the fore. And uh, just looking at uh, position number eight, Speed Company Racing, a little bit off the pace. We did see them have a mechanical. The surprise riders of yesterday, they were in second spot overall. And that second spot seems to be in jeopardy. It's got Sram down, three and a half minutes down on the stage. That's Nino Schurter and Lars Forster. So they are, again, having to uh, come uh, from behind. Uh, they're on the back foot on the second day in a row at the 2022 Absa Cape Epic. How will they respond? We know that uh, Nino Schurter will fight for every single second he can pull back. It's going to be uh, an added dynamic to this race. Blevins charges off the front on this little descent. Well, it always seems unfortunate that a team would lose their lead from uh, from a mechanical, but that's what it's all about at the Absa Cape Epic. It's all about preserving your energy and preserving uh, and, and pacing yourself, but as much of that is also preserving your equipment and looking after your equipment. And uh, because of so many factors and so many risks at play, it's about taking no risks when it comes to equipment. And we did hear a little bit of a rumbling about uh, the rear tires of the Scots Ram teams were quite light tires. They were riding really fast rolling tires yesterday. And um, the cynics uh, would perhaps say that that might just be taking a bit too much of a risk. We know that uh, the Bulls team in previous years never took risks. They rode bikes that were slightly heavier. Uh, they rode tires certainly that were slightly more beefy. Even if it did mean they didn't roll as fast, it meant that the infinite time that they could lose from a puncture, were um, those risks were reduced. And that did them very well over the years. And that brings us back to the key component, and this is the backup team. And we know that over the years, as successful as uh, the uh, specialized teams have been, they've also had issues with mechanicals, but they've had really strong and supportive backup teams have been able to help them out when needed. And uh, so that's the, that is the key component here. It's certainly a key component when it comes to the full-length marathon yeah. racing. Unfortunately, yesterday for the uh, SRAM Scott's Ram pairing of Vino Schurt and Lars Foster. It was the prologue, and there was no such thing as a backup team in the prologue because their team, the Frischknecht and uh, Ragnoli pairing, were already up the road. They'd started before them, and there was no chance to borrow a wheel from that team. So they'd lost three over th almost four minutes. Well, four minutes and 38 seconds was the gap, and uh, another gap today. So no doubt they'll be relooking that strategy as we rejoin the All-African team, the leaders at the moment in that competition, and uh, they're riding a great race. That The first time check, they were well, much, well really into the, in that main group um, of nine teams in Buko Giant, and definitely the fact that he's uh, suffering uh, today. He had a crash last year whilst uh, riding the uh, Absa Cape Epic, and uh, that cost him uh, a finish there. But uh, Marco Hubert on his wheel, well, yeah, as we've talked about and uh, Annika has made uh, plenty of uh, uh, comment about it is one day one rider strong the other day the other rider strong and uh, it's how you manage that dynamic uh, getting through the days it makes all the difference in the end of the stage uh, really because if you constantly lose one or two seconds uh, here and there uh, it really it adds up in the end and if you can help your partner give a little push make sure to go to the front and take the wind at the right time can kind of limit uh, those losses and uh, it makes all the difference and here's an example if you're talking about just now about uh, the, the the rider who's feeling strong will let the, the one who's struggling but set the pace for the time being and and let him uh, uh, recover so you don't uh, put him into the uh, hurt box too much yeah because if you're already feeling on the limit the last thing you want mm. is to be overcooked because you have to follow the wheel of your, your partner. So it's uh, stage racing as a, as a team is, is not easy. You need to be clever, smart, and constantly 
uh, analyze the situation and kind of make the right moves at the right time. It, it makes all the difference. We caught a glimpse there of uh, Nino Schurter, Lars Forster, trying to make up time. Three and a half minutes down on the stage, and uh, that takes them to perhaps over eight minutes down on a general classification standings at the moment. Forster and Schurter. That's a huge deficit. Uh, even though we're on the uh, first of the big marathon stages of seven, uh, yes, there's time to make it up and you've got to factor in all uh, the issues that can and might go uh, wrong or right for other teams. But uh, they've got a lot of work to do to fight their way back here. Marco Hubert and uh, his partner in front of him here is Peter de Toy of Mbuko, a type dev uh, presented by Giant. They're a, Paul, a Wellington based uh, team and now Marco Hubert. He's going to go to the front here. Man, a young man from Port Elizabeth, although in the team, he's the oldest in the team at uh, 25. Uh, there are a lot of talented young riders uh, in that part of the world. Hans Becking and uh, Jose Diaz just starting to uh, create a little bit of a gap to the, uh, the leading pair there. That's uh, Sirvold and Stosek up ahead. Canyon North Wave. Having a really good day today, huh? They look so strong. Well, this is really their terrain. We've seen them uh, in 2021. They had a fantastic day on stage three, and they were very much on the pace, even up until stage three, and they had a great prologue. And today, just they came back this in 2022, just a little bit better prepared with the backup team, and um, backup team made up of none other than a 2014 winner of the race, Christian Heineck. So they are, a, they are really here to win, no doubt, and managed by a very experienced campaigner at the Absecape Epic, Eric Kleinhans, who's ridden these trails, uh, and he's also ridden these trails in anger as a backup team member. So we uh, know they're in good hands, and uh, all to play for for the Canyon Northwave team. We were catching a glimpse earlier of um, Mbuko, and Team Mbuko and Peter de Toy and Marco Joubert hit that time check at uh, the water point three, and they were in 13th spot, four minutes down, and uh, right really close to them was Team Insect Science, Keegan Bontekuning and Arno de Toy. So that APSA African competition all to play for there. Stosek following the lines of his Canyon Northwaite uh, Northway teammate uh, Andreas Servolt. who won uh, one of the more uh, brutally hard world championships uh, last year. It was a notorious world championships, mm. extremely hard. In fact, Nino Schurter raced that uh, World Championships and didn't finish. He posted a DNF, which is very unusual for Nino Schurter. And uh, Andreas Seervold uh, prevailed, and that's why he's wearing that uh, stripy jersey. I can tell you that uh, of the top 10 uh, at that World Championship, uh, Seervold was the winner. Jose Diaz was uh, third. Wout Allemann, who's riding here, the Belgian champion, was in fourth place. Keegan Svensson was in seventh place. Thiago Ferreira, ninth place. And Sergio Manticon Guterres in tenth. They're all riding here. They're all here and they're all really doing really well. If you look at down the, uh, down the list, Manticon Guterres uh, hit the time check at the water point three, only two minutes down in seventh spot. And uh, in fact, just ahead of Speed Company Racing and significantly ahead of Scott Sram. And uh, just uh, really only a little bit ahead of, uh, or a little bit behind Pirelli Factory Racing. The world champion in the marathon is at the front of this brutally hard stage here at the Absa Cape Epic. It's stage one, 92 kilometers, 2,850 meters of climbing. They've come through the halfway spot. They've done uh, the, the toughest in terms of uh, terrain and steepness climb of the, uh, the day, the saddle climb, but there's plenty more work to do as they do a whole big loop around this uh, Helderberg Bowl. You can see the mountains in the background. They're heading around uh, that uh, side of the mountain. This is the second group, the chase group, and it is Toyota 91 Specialized, and uh, behind them is Santa Cruz, and the leaders, of course, in front in the yellow jerseys. Well, they are, at the moment, probably just hanging on to those jerseys uh, by their fingernails because uh, Stosik and uh, Sievolt up front there. But Beers just uh, losing his line there and wanting to get back on the wheel of uh, Chris Blevins. Well, it would be a good tactic for the Santa Cruz guys just really to sit wheel at the moment and let the, let the yellow jerseys chase. It's all for them to, def to defend the race and defend that yellow jersey. So tactically, if you were a road cyclist, 
You would let the yellow jersey do all the work and not participate at all. And the, the uh, Santa Cruz team can really benefit from that situation in the race. Maxi Marot at the back there and Keegan Svensson riding their first laps at Cape Epicure as well. Two highly credentialed riders. Uh, Marotta a lot more experienced in terms of uh, the World Cups with Svensson again part of a, a, a groundswell of really talented uh, young Americans Chris Plevins is up there as well coming through and Chris we talked about the Swiss Epic and uh, the great performance of Svensson at the Swiss Epic in 2018 having won a stage and he's partnered with none other than Christopher Blevins. So the two are friends, the two are uh, they're today they're rivals and in fact for the rest of the week they're rivals and it'll be interesting to see how all of that plays out what about this dynamic? It uh, really does uh, add some real spice to the uh, day's uh, racing and entertainment with uh, Schurter and uh, Forster trying to claw back time. Look at Seervolt, the world champion, really hammering it along, uh, along this uh, contour road high up in the valley. We saw Storzak uh, setting the pace earlier and now it's up to Seervolt in this section as they get ready to descend to the Lawrenceford Trail section of the race and down to the time check five at the water point four at the 74 kilometer mark. We'll have a very good idea as to how well they're doing. But they've certainly opened a gap here from them, between them and Buff Megamo. Buff Megamo will be looking, uh, hoping to close that gap, but they'll also be looking back to see where Santa Cruz and 91 Songo specialized. The riders will not necessarily have as much of a bird's eye view of the race as we do. So with the chaos of what's been going on, what the trails have been throwing at them and what their rivals have been throwing at them, there will be a huge amount of confusion with the riders, even the riders at the front. And the sooner they can get an idea of what's actually happening in the race for their mindsets to understand it, the better. But there's one thing for sure, that the leaders know they're in the lead right now and they're going to make it count. Mm. You can see they're really flying and, and on fire today. Um, I have a good feeling they could... Uh, go really well today and if they can manage to grab the, the yellow jerseys today which obviously is their goal it puts them up, up nicely in a good position because all of a sudden they are like okay we have the jerseys uh, and they can kind of uh, sit back and let other people attack if they want to um, it's it's a good position to be in be in the in the jerseys not having to chase down something but being like okay we can ride the race like we wanted to because we are in the jerseys so you talk about the jerseys and we look at the world champions jersey and there's almost in sport there's nothing like this rainbow jersey in in cycling is there uh, you're in the race you know exactly who the world champion is but as the world champion and you've been in that position you're wearing that jersey um i mean it, it, in reality it's a jersey but there's a there must be some energy and some force some power oh yeah for jersey. sure there is what does it do to you uh, it does everything. <laughs> it does everything. Um, I remember the first time that I had a jersey like that. All of a sudden, you know, it's a whole lot more attention because it's the jersey, the, the jersey that every cyclist uh, is, a, is aspiring to get. So it, it is quite unique. It, it is quite special. On the other hand, you're, it, you also know that when you have that jersey, it's because you're strong and you're capable and you can really ride your bike fast and on the day where everything mattered you were the one that was, was the strongest so yeah it's a special jersey very special jersey well uh, it really is uh, significant to see the world champions uh, jersey at the front of this race here on uh, day one of the absic epic and back to the the women's uh, racing uh, back to the leaders of actually of the the women's racing uh, we're back with uh, toyota 91 Sango, sorry, Sango 91, spe uh, 91 specialized with Haley Baden and Sofia uh, Gomez. Um, again, interesting. Um, we can see here Haley setting the pace at the front and kind of forces Sofia a little bit to kind of stay with her. Um, I hope that they have talk, uh, talked tactics um, because it could be a risk that if Haley is feeling very good that it will put Sophia too much into the red. Uh, we'll see how it all unfolds, but they look very good today, both of them. So saw uh, Sivald nearly overcooking a very tight hairpin there as they come down the mountain uh, off that uh, fire road, the contour road up on the mountain slopes here. Well, the good thing for these, for these um, guys right now is that they're not under pressure. And uh, if you were to compare the mindset between the leaders of the race, um, the Canyon Northwave team, 
they have all to play for and they can stay more or less uh, they can be a, a little bit more serene they can um, they can drive that advantage home without taking too many risks on the descent they're not running scared they're not chasing and they're not trying to make back any time so they are in a commanding position of the race which psychologically makes a big difference for a team and they know they've uh, got the firepower to distance even the likes of um, buff megamo so they know they're on a good day and uh, opportunities don't always come around every day at the absa cape epic if you're on a good day you have to make it count definitely you never know what tomorrow brings we saw uh, nino shioda yesterday in the post-race interview saying that yeah okay we had bad luck today but at least we got that out of the way <laughs> bang day bang. two another one yeah you never know what tomorrow brings mm. Yeah, they are suffering, that's for sure. And it's how re you react to that as to uh, uh, determine how you will uh, finish the race. And uh, Schurter and Foster are having to uh, dig very, very deep at the moment. Back with the race leaders, Matt Beers and uh, Chris Blevins of Toyota 91 uh, Specialized. They seem to have distanced the uh, Santa Cruz team. Perhaps on that little kicker after the uh, Lawrenceford saddle, uh, there was... Uh, bit of a rise there and uh, as they head down into the trails uh, head down towards Lawrenceford trails they might have distanced them on that uh, saddle um, really because they perhaps if they felt that they were hanging on a little bit and just pushing the pace gets rid of them and takes another factor out of their uh, takes just one less thing to think about for this team who are defending that leader's jersey right now at that time check they were just over a minute behind the marauding Canyon Northwave team and if you were to stop the race right now or at that water point, it would be more or less even that deficit of one minute that, uh, that the yellow jerseys put into Canyon North Wave at the prologue, more or less wiped out right now. But still a bit to go, uh, at least another 30 kilometers to go before they hit that finish in Lawrenceford Wine Estate. Yeah, five months ago, Matt Beers and Jordan Saru took the yellow jerseys after winning the prologue on the slopes of Table Mountain, and they uh, wore them right the way through to Val de V. Never done before, and uh, it was a quite supreme performance by uh, Beers, winning for the first time. There's that uh, switchback, and uh, just taking it carefully enough, a very tight uh, happen. But uh, this year, well, they're under pressure already on stage one to uh, retain those jerseys. We just saw sweeping into that uh, hairpin that uh, we saw the yellow jerseys navigate was the team of uh, Santa Cruz. And uh, looks like they're on the chase, certainly using the descent to take a couple of risks just to get back in touch with the yellow jersey team. It's always easier to be on the back of a, a team to keep your pace. It uh, keeps your mind off um, having to constantly push and uh, just gives a bit of a mental break being in touch with a team like this knowing that when they're setting the pace, they're on the right kind of pace. And uh, just a little bit of darts will be creeping to their mind. Of course, if they couldn't match them on those climbs, there are a few more climbs. Just before they reach the Lawrenceford trails, there is a bit of a kicker. And so final last two kickers, after they've reached that 74 kilometer mark, there are two more climbs to go before they get to the Thirsty Bridge and run into the finish. It'll be one or two familiar uh, sections as they get closer to the finish that thirsty bridge one of them uh, from the prologue but uh, lots of new trail today for these riders to uh, get to grips with and and much of it uh, th th some riders may be familiar with some of the more established and and uh, public publicly accessible trails but uh, these won't be so there are riders here who are riding so-called blind but uh, these are the very best riders in the world and they know how to uh, handle themselves in these sort of conditions in this type of trail beautiful scenes as they uh, circumnavigate the uh, Helderberg basin here high above uh, Lawrenceford wine estate well the seam the, the race seems to have calmed down a little bit we don't know exactly what's going on back the trails with Scott SRAM of course they will be uh, in full race mode trying to make up that deficit um, but certainly from the chaos that we've seen from the saddle climb and on the Lawrenceford saddle um, the, and even beforehand in the Helderberg trails, um, everything seems to have uh, settled into a more or less a status quo with the team out in front, Canyon Northwave, and uh, just over, around about a minute behind chasing them is, t is the yellow jersey team. And uh, with 
Santa Cruz in close quarters, looking to close that gap to them. Remote uh, Jeep track trails, these uh, high above the mountains. Yep, the uh, quality of this field in terms of uh, the marathon exponents of the uh, sport uh, in the men's race is very evident and it's coming to the fore today on the first big marathon day, albeit uh, that bad luck has uh, uh, gone the way of uh, Nino Schurter and uh, Lars Forster. And that will just add to the dynamic of how they fight back and get themselves back into contention, if they're able to do that uh, in today's race. So do they, at some stage, uh, say to uh, Andre Frischnick and Yuri Ranioli, you're our guys, now we'll support you and let them go, go ahead, depending on how much time they have lost. Certainly not uh, perhaps until uh, at least the end of the stage, if not later. Beautiful pictures here. Uh, we just saw Buff Megamo in picture, and now the chopper is catching up with the, the leading team, uh, Canyon Northwave. We have them right here. And interesting, very, very, very interesting. We also saw that the Santa Cruz guys actually had distance uh, themselves, like ahead of the yellow jerseys. They were not behind them. They're actually lying in third on the stage with a gap to the yellow jerseys. Uh, I'm sure we'll get confirmations once we have the, the next time gap, uh, uh, the, the water points on the next time split. But all leading teams here are spread out. So we have Canyon North Wave with a gap to Buff Me Megamo, with a gap to Santa Cruz, with a gap to Toyota 91 Specialized. That's kind of the top four standing. No, of the, None of the teams are uh, within touch of each other. They mm. are kind of spread yes. out yeah. because the terrain is so brutally tough. You need to kind of ride it in your own pace. Yeah, I think the saddle climb took uh, a lot out of these teams and really did uh, sh shatter the uh, group. And then over the top, this pair, Andre Sevolt and Martin Storsek, put the hammer down and have opened that gap to uh, Becking and Diaz, as they saw a little bit earlier there, just going through that uh, mountain stream, the rocky mountain stream. There they come. Diaz leading uh, Becking through, riding it very smoothly indeed, uh, unlike uh, Sevolt and uh, his partner, Still secure to jump off briefly. Sometimes it's quite hard to mm. see the line through the water, and often, most of the time, there are like some quite big rocks down there as well, and you need to hit a smooth line to actually go through uh, nice and safely. What's interesting, this team, they uh, it is now known as a buff Megamo, and uh, it's uh, it, the Megamo refers to the a bike brand that they're riding. A new bike uh, for this year, in fact, a prototype. And uh, the Absecade Epic has given rise to. In fact, it's a fantastic test ground for uh, for equipment. If you if your equipment can survive this race, it can survive anything. And that's pretty much the saying. And there is a almost a graveyard of uh, broken equipment among the team mechanics of items, uh, tires, and uh, shocks, and um, and components that just haven't made it through this race. And the manufacturers, the biggest brands in the world, look. The engineers look at those uh, broken parts and uh, find ways of improving them. So it's a well-known test ground, especially at, the, at, at race pace. It's all very well riding uh, equipment at, um, at, at someone's leisure, but when you're riding it in the, heat of the, in the heat of the action, it's all about how durable it is. And uh, fascinating to see how, um, how this team do, because last year we saw them really as a surprise team. They won three stages, and they are looking to make back that time. There is quite a big gap up to the leaders and great shots from the helicopter being able to hunt them down. And uh, there is uh, certainly a marauding cannon. Uh, it's the Canyon Northwave team. It's all to play for for them. And chasing them, of course, is the Yellow Jersey team. And uh, it's the team of Matthew Beers and Christopher Blevins, 91, Toyota 91 Specialized. And speaking of uh, equipment, uh, during those years that I've been doing the race, it developed so much. Uh, one thing, first of all, we are all on, all riders, most of the riders are on full suspension uh, bikes. Uh, the technology of uh, full suspension bikes, no matter what brand, uh, nowadays is so high that uh, you really, um, you need to ride a full suspension bike in these conditions. Um, hardtail, you will be, your body will be a disaster every single day. Um, another feature that has changed uh, a lot, of course, 29 inch wheels. It's been a while since we rode the 26, the smaller uh, wheels. And also the width of the tires. I think at my first Cape Epic, first of all, the rims 
of the, the wheels were uh, more narrow. And also the tires. I think we rode something like 2.0, 2.1. And now uh, most of the riders are on a, a tire width of uh, 2.3, 2.35. And I think actually the Scott guys and probably also more teams are on 2.4. So it all moves into a direction of, you know, having a bike that's much more comfortable in these rocky, rocky uh, conditions. Technology of the equipment today is very high, so it all stays uh, kind of light. Uh, everything has just developed into making it a more smooth, comfortable ride, fast ride. And talking of, uh, talking of equipment, we, uh, the journalists often arrive at the prologue and um, I was hoping to get the scoop of what the latest equipment that's coming out, and some of them spotted some really interesting things. The the uh, journalists that we were speaking to earlier were looking at the uh, taking pictures of the uh, canyon bikes and they were ushered away very quickly by the mechanics <laughs> uh, mm. because clearly there are some interesting prototypes going on here not just with the Megamo team but also with the canyon so the just as we said that the uh, cameraman and the helicopter took a bit of a close-up there of the canyon bikes but we'll get a closer look at that and we'll report back throughout the day and uh, throughout the week on what special equipment we see something unusual for all the uh, equipment uh, tech nerds out there, we'll keep you informed of that. It's safe to say that uh, the canyons are doing very well today out on the trails. And uh, Andreas Seewald, piloted by the uh, very capable Andreas Seewald and Martin Storzak. Yeah, they're doing a special ride today, our Canyon North Wave, as they take the fight to uh, uh, Toyota 91 Specialized of Matt Beers and Chris Blevins. A one minute and six second uh, deficit to them at the start of the stage. They were in third place after the prologue yesterday, Sjöwald and Stosek. And uh, they s look as though at this stage they may be able to do enough to rest that uh, yellow jersey off the shoulders of Beers and Blevins. That's uh, Jose Diaz on the front, the Portuguese rider, bronze medalist at last year's World Marathon Championships behind Sjöwald. And with him is the Dutch marathon champion Hans Becking uh, and uh, Team Buff Megamo. And they are in second place on the stage at the moment. Looks like a gap of probably a minute, minute and uh, 20 seconds. And then uh, behind them, it was Santa Cruz and then uh, Toyota 91 uh, Specialized. Today truly is one of the most brutal stages uh, in this race uh, in to this year. Uh, and it also gives us a very, like, a very clear picture of who is in shape, who can handle all these uh, eight days. Today is uh, we are kind of seeing uh, everything unfold, and we get a more clear picture of what to expect during the week. Uh, there's still a big unknown factor, uh, which is is anyone uh, kind of over overcooking it today and having to pay for that, or uh, and will because there's also the big unknown factor of having mechanicals and issues and it only takes ever so little to, uh, to for you to lose everything. So still quite open, even though we're getting a little bit of a feel of yeah, who to watch from now on. Well, it's certainly a good indication of form and physical. Uh, if you take all of the uh, possible mechanicals out of, out of the equation, the physical form of the riders, it's clear that uh, Andreas Sievelt and Martin Storzak are on it. Well, they've got good form. Uh, the, in fact, uh, two of the top uh, three teams uh, on this stage, in fact, the top two teams finished in the top three positions at uh, the uh, big uh, stage race in Andalusia in February. Won by Seewald and Stoll second. In third place were Diaz and Becking with Ravenstein and Hallemann in uh, second place. So all those riders are in this uh, race. They've had some good racing, good hard uh, stage racing coming into the event and some good form so they're bringing it uh, to the uh, playing field here at the Absa Cape Epic and great to see a beautiful section of single track flying down that contour and onto the road that was uh, Ariane Luti and Amy Wakefield who earlier today looked as though they'd lost touch with that uh, lead group in the women's race we don't uh, have an idea yet of where they're positioned right now but uh, they're certainly chasing and working hard. They were third on the prologue yesterday. This is Keegan Svensson back and Maxine Marot of Team Santa Cruz. We think they're in third place on the stage right now, ahead of Matt Beers and Chris Blevins. Well, it's also stretched out at the moment, and uh, 
It's almost like every, it's everyone, it's almost like a time trial. It's like yes. we're, we're witnessing the prologue all over again. And it's uh, probably due to the fact that the riders that really want to make it make a go of it, and uh, like we were talking about earlier, really important that when you're on a good day, you make it count, you stay out front, and you try and get out as much time as you possibly can. And here we're back with what we think are our leading ladies, uh, the Team 91 Sanko Specialized. And here we see them looking a little bit more in sync uh, than uh, what we saw previously up there brutally. Okay, so we got just uh, got confirmation, I think, that this is actually second place on today. We mm. still need to get Well, I think we saw Ariane Luthi and, and uh, mm. Amy Wakefield come down here a short while ago. Yes. So uh, it may well be that they are now leading the stage. They well, are. There we go. So Amy Wakefield and Ariane Luthi had a plan all along. Take it easy up the mm. first King's... Uh, climb and uh, we'll hammer it up the uh, saddle climb and uh, they've taken uh, at the moment uh, a, a good lead in the race this is uh, the uh, Sofia Gomez Villafan Haley Batten combination in second place maybe that that saddle climb they really did uh, work hard maybe just taking a little moment to recover mm. yes well we have word out in the course that uh, the team of 91 Songo Specialized were really struggling on that saddle climb and uh, they were passed by the Simtech team of Ariane Luthi and Amy Wakefield. Dynamics all around the race as Team Santa Cruz now in uh, third place in the men's race uh, flying through the trails here. And uh, the women's race delivering uh, drama and uh, some great riding by the Simtech pair of Amy Wakefield and Ariane Luthi. We saw Ariane Luthi and Amy Wakefield really being distance on the early part in the King's climb in fact but they have absolutely measured their effort, efforts perfectly, just as evidenced by that split time at the 53-kilometer mark. They know that this is a big day out for them. They've already put two minutes into 91 Songo Specialized, and we still have yet to see BMC mountain bike racing come through that time check. So already it's clear that uh, the marathon specialists are in Luti, multiple Swiss champion. She's wearing the Swiss National Championships jersey. She's been on the podium at the World Championships and let's not forget that she has won this race five times, twice in the mixed, and three times in the women's category. And more motivated than ever to come back here to the race. And, and once again, going for the, the leader's jersey. Uh, they surely look like they're having a good day today, and it's good to see. Well, there's confirmation of the split times. At, well, that was 16 kilometers, just uh, taken off this a long time ago. As uh, we sit now with, uh, I think, Isla Stowe, who's our uh, Bull Z bike uh, media bike here on the tail of Amy Wakefield. What an opportunity for this pair to take uh, hold of the race here. A way to go still, but they're in a very, very good uh, shape right now. They uh, started the day that uh, this pair, Ariane Luti and uh, her partner, Amy Wakefield in third place on the general classification after a, a tiny, a good uh, prologue yesterday. Well, they seem very happy with their results. They are not necessarily, they admitted to, them, to, to us that they were not uh, necessarily hoping for a win, that uh, they were just looking at the numbers and riding to their abilities. Um, but today is a day where they are absolutely extending themselves and really making the most of their marathon talents. They are very much long distance cyclists and especially when it gets super hard and super tough, uh, that they are making the most of it. And looking at that time check, they were ahead of 91 Songo Specialized by almost two minutes at 157 at that time check. And faces Roller, the South African pairing of Candice Hill and Mariska Strauss at three minutes and 34 at that 53 kilometer mark and still no sign of BMC mountain bike racing. So everything is uh, really upside down from yesterday. Um, clearly, uh, Simtech uh, South Africa are having a, a good day today and are really shining. And here we are back with our second place on the day. Uh, to specialized. Looking like now, finally, they're kind of finding a good rhythm on the... This is a climb. And if Haley is feeling a little bit stronger, uh, it's always a good strategy to, to let uh, her partner Sophia go to the front. Let her set the pace in order to not have the risk of Sofia overcooking because it's still a long week to go. 
And uh, don't underestimate how uh, hot it is out there as well in that uh, bowl environment there. Very, very warm indeed. Uh, even though it's uh, uh, 10 in the morning here in South Africa, very, very hot indeed. Now, the back with the uh, yellow jerseys in the men's race, and that is significant. Matt Beers and uh, Chris Blevins. Doing all they can to kind of stay in contention. And here we see a good example of, of kind of managing the combined forces within the team. Chris is feeling a little bit better, so he's capable of... Now he goes to the front, uh, into the single track, and before that, just giving uh, Matt a little bit of a push just to help him uh, get back on to hopefully some of these teams. Well, that's our uh, e-bike rider, and uh, well, we couldn't be, uh, clearly identify the team uh, ahead of them there. It must be the Santa Cruz team, I think. Looked like it will. Maybe in, uh, Marot and uh, his partner, Keegan Svensson, as uh, we now with the drone uh, on the drone zone, flying down this uh, single track with Beers and Blevins. Blevins just flying off the front there. Yes. Beers, you get the feeling he's not having the best day today. No, it's le it looks like he's really paying for the effort uh, yesterday. One thing that we cited in the very beginning of the uh, of the race, before the prologue started, in fact, is that the last race was five months ago. And a lot can happen in a year in a rider's career, and especially after a punishing race like the Apsa Cape Epic. So there were question marks as to whether Beers could carry that, that form all the way through. Uh, it takes a lot of recovery time for, from the Apsa Cape Epic. And uh, we're now looking at uh, Nina Schurter and Lars Foster. Uh, this is the team that have lost the most today, and in fact also lost yesterday, lost over four minutes yesterday. And behind them is uh, the surprise team of yesterday, that was speed racing and uh, no doubt got some good allies uh, forming a good alliance to make back that lost time yeah, speed company racing joe georg egger and lucas baum with uh, lars forster and nino schurter and we are with blevins and beers amazing trails down here amazing trails and amazing view as well the well mountains it's, it's it's something you 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 observed yesterday, having written the prologue the day before. Is that, uh, that there are so many new trails every year? You come back here, you you ride different trails and uh, and, and new trails. It's just uh, spectacular, it really. Is uh, the heart of mountain biking here in uh, in South Africa, down here in the Western Cape, as Speed Company Racing and uh, Scott Sram chase for all they're worth both have had mechanicals today but scott stram have lost more because yesterday they lost four and a half minutes and they're we're at one stage over three and a half minutes back today sweeping through these beautiful lawrenceford trails in the blue gum forest here yeah, it looks like the uh, uh, there's a team on their wheels as well so they're three teams together there the helicopter doing gymnastics to uh, pick up these riders as they twist and turn through the trails. Egger and Baum have brought the racing and uh, some real form as well to uh, the Apsa Cape Epic in uh, 2022 in their debut race. And what a delight to watch uh, arguably the greatest uh, male cyclist of all time and Nino Schurter flying through these uh, serene trails. Be, but that he's uh, he and uh, Forster have lost some seven minutes uh, overall, and uh, well, they know that up ahead the teams will be aware that they have uh, by now they would have known that they've lost time even more time, so they uh, will be working hard to just keep that to gap and increase it to uh, Schurter and uh, Forster because never mind that they've lost so much time, they are such racers and such champions. They will, if they have a good day with a trouble-free day, they'll certainly be uh, right up on the wheels of those riders. Targeting for stage wins. Yep, yep. absolutely. You'll see that. Impressive ride by the speed company uh, guys here. They're really doing a good, good job. Uh, we saw them so strong yesterday and still now today, despite uh, yeah, all the issues, they're matching the, the pace of the Scott Schramm uh, team.
Beautiful. They've gone all around the top of the valley there, now down into the uh, the bottom of the valley. And they'll emerge uh, very shortly, heading towards uh, the fourth water point. So that fourth water point that we spoke about is at the 74-kilometer mark. And uh, that's at the Lawrenceford Farm. And uh, just after the Lawrenceford trail section, that beautiful trail section we saw from the helicopter. And we've already seen passing through that time check is Canyon Northwave mountain bike racing. Andreas Siebold and Martin Storzak on a fantastic day. The Germans, the German and the Czech rider and uh, the marathon world champion. As we look at uh, Lars Foster, who, um, the Scott SRAM team have lost plenty of time today again. And uh, Nina Scherzer up the trails. Certainly looks like Lars Foster is on the back foot. Yeah, Nino Schurter has got uh, a bit between his teeth. Don't like losing time. And this is Svensson and uh, Marot of uh, Team Santa Cruz. And you can just see how loose it is on the trails. Mm. And uh, as they went around the corner, it didn't look very fast, but just that back wheel sliding out a little bit. Good clue as to how what the trail conditions are like. And what we can expect for the rest of the week, certainly in Grayton, it's uh, rockier and looser and rougher. And uh, the riders who are not used to these conditions will be spending today customizing themselves to just what it's like to ride trails when it is this loose and this dusty. Yeah, and dry and hot in summer. They, uh, these are the trails that uh, the Absa Cape Epic uh, have been renowned for. But uh, in October last year, it was different. It was a slightly damper out of uh, the wet winter so the trails are very very uh, different to these but uh, this is traditional absa cape epic style uh, trail dry loose dusty and fast and catching up with andreas sievolt we uh, he did say he stated very clearly that the dust is expected to be a bigger problem in march and uh, it'll be really important to stay in front is what he said prior to the race and uh, it's clearly he's taking that to heart right now as he's already gone through that first time check with his partner, Martin Storzak. And uh, just passing through there behind them, 42 seconds back, Hans Becking and Jose Diaz. Um, but we're right now we're with the Santa Cruz team of Maxi Marat and Keegan Swenson as they cement their favorite. One of the, we saw them as a dark horse team. We shouldn't have because Maxi Marat has been around for a long time. He's been on the World Cup scene for over a decade and Swenson, one of the rising stars of the sport. Only, I think only as dark horses because they uh, are making their debuts here. And they've gone through that uh, checkpoint two minutes and 48 seconds behind Sievold and uh, Stosek. And uh, so that puts them just over two minutes behind Becking and uh, Diaz. There they go. So confirmation of that. 74 kilometers done of the 92 today in uh, stage one of the Absa Cape Epic. And this is the uh, pair of Foster and uh, Schurter. My word, they have put in an, a huge, huge ride today because they were they had lost an enormous amount of time. Yes, they're still around about three minutes down, but uh, they've had to work extremely hard. Uh, going up that uh, saddle climb must have been extraordinary for them. They fly through and uh, speed company racing on their wheels. Three minutes and 23 down on Sivolt and Stosek. The top five teams then through 74 kilometers. There they are. Well, you'll be, anyone who's been watching this race will know there is a big name missing from that top five going through there. And that is the Toyota, the, the, the Toyota 91 Specialized team. We haven't seen them yet. We don't know what's going on with them down on the trails, out on the trails as they're entering the Lawrenceford trail section. And, uh, could be looking back to them right now. No, that's not them either. I think that might be Tiago Ferreira. No, it's not. That's, uh, I think, Manticon Guterres. He may have gone through there in uh, sixth place. And then uh, perhaps Sasha Weber and Jakob Fenta. Oh, the big question at that time check is where are the yellow jerseys right now? There we go, confirming those. So, uh, William Pirelli, both teams through uh, sixth and seventh place. Then Scott Calabandida, that's Manticon Guterres and Cartero. And here come the yellow jerseys. Well, 
troubled days today for them. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's quite clear that they really have to pay for the the efforts uh, yesterday. Well, that's what we think. We need to get confirmation on on their feelings uh, of today, uh, but definitely not on the same speed as we saw them yesterday. It just doesn't seem to be the same urgency. Perhaps they're having a mechanical. We've seen them reaching down, maybe it's just to get uh, to get refueled, so they can empty their bottles before they put another bottle in making sure they don't waste any of that valuable nutrition that they've spent so long thinking through and planning. And uh, Matt Beer's not looking as, uh, as sprightly as he did before. And perhaps uh, being a bigger rider, it's not always that easy to deal with the heat. The smaller riders tend to have an easier time in the extreme heat conditions. And we're sitting in a, in a wonderful air-conditioned studio right now. But we are not, we just... Uh, Really looking at the weather forecast, we expected to see it going to uh, over 30 degrees. And uh, it is definitely a factor that Matthew Beers doesn't cope well in the heat. Five minutes down, they are our Toyota 91 uh, Sunder Specialized. That's the general classification virtual lead. So at stop the race right now. The Canyon Northwave MTB pair will be in the yellow jerseys by two minutes and 24 from uh, Buff Megamo. And then the Speed Company Racing continuing an extraordinary debut race in third place but of course the race doesn't stop now and uh, we know that uh, in this uh, wonderful sport of mountain biking anything anything can happen at any given moment that can uh, turn the, the race on its head as we've seen already well look at that scott srammer yeah. in ninth place now on the virtual gc of the race we're to stop right now which is significant because they were i think out of the top 20 uh, when they entered today's race and with the uh, with the the, the mayhem that's been going on in the last few kilometers in the trail on the saddle climb even before the saddle climb and now it all seems to be playing out and we're back to the women and this team team Simtech ZA have had a blind river day they measured their efforts perfectly on that first climb not going too deep into the red they were over two minutes back at that time check and they have turned this race around and they're making it their own the marathon specialists Arian Luti and Amy Wakefield having such a good day today it's quite clear they're shining and they look super composed and in control and they work quite well together you don't often see a big uh, gap between these two riders and it in the end it makes all the difference that you are capable of staying within close uh, yeah, distance of your partner because then you can always draft or just mentally being with your partner makes all the difference not that one rider is feeling on the back foot uh, constantly uh, yeah they are they're working quite well together they did a race together a uh, long time ago i think it was back in 17 or something and then just this spring just a month ago so they they had the experience of riding together and they're just executing it today looking over shoulders here just to make sure we're all together and uh, looks like uh, was that uh, Nino looking over his shoulder to find uh, Lars Forster. Well, Lars Forster is the last rider yeah. that you see there. You can see that head dipping down. It's not his natural body language. It's not his normal style. Normally, he's an extremely aggressive rider, but just that head, that position, that body language is saying that he is absolutely suffering. So that huge effort that they took to get back into right now into the fourth spot they reached that water point fourth just with the uh, the team of Egger and Baum and having lost only three minutes to the marauding Canyon North Wave team. They had great difficulties with their uh, with their tire. They had to put a tube in it, which is really not the best case scenario because of the thorns and the rocks that, uh, that you pick up along the way. But they'll be looking to get back in touch with the... Uh, with the Speed Company Racing Team and, of course, the Willia Pirelli teams of uh, Daniel Giesmeyer and, uh, and Cameron and Ravenstein and Alleman. Uh, so that pair very that important joined, yeah. factor in this, uh, in this race. That pair, Ravenstein and uh, Alleman, have joined uh, Speed Company Racing. So uh, Ravenstein knows this uh, race very well indeed. Alleman in his uh, first effort here and uh, likewise uh, Baum and uh, Ega speed company racing now oh, maybe they will look and say well let's uh, see if we can work uh, together here and put more time into uh, 
Scott Sram, who are having a wretched time, really are having a battle uh, at this year's Zabsa Cape Epic. Lars Forster in a world of hurt, it seems, at the moment. And uh, Nino Schurt is going to have his work cut out over the next uh, 18 or so kilometres to uh, nurse him through. Look at these trails, fantastic. On board with... Uh, one of our Bulls e-bike riders, uh, Stefan Sam, a uh, three-time winner of the Absa Cape Epic. Thomas Dietsch, a multiple uh, finisher here at the Absa Cape Epic. And, of course, Isla Stowe has also completed this uh, race a couple of times. They are our three e-bike races. Back Chris, with our yeah. Yeah, yellow jerseys, and it's quite clear. Matt is hurting today. He's hurting so badly, and Chris has to help him through this stage because uh, it's still a long way to go and if you're absolutely empty it can seem like never ending so good teamwork here from the, the yellow jerseys yep now we're seeing two of the favorite teams with one rider in each in uh, big big uh, distress uh, beers here for the uh, toyota 91 specialized team and foster for scott sram and it's about managing their the uh, the efforts for these riders and getting them through the day without uh, creating uh, too many difficulties for them. It is, and they'll have to manage today. They'll have to uh, limit their losses as much as they possibly can and refuel and use this chance just to get as much on board as they can. Matt Beers is clearly not enjoying the heat that he's experiencing today out on the course. We did predict temperatures way into the 30s, and uh, they have already lost five minutes to the Canyon Northwave team who hit that time check first in just over three, well, three hours and 15 minutes um, with Buff Megamo also putting in some great times. They were only 42 seconds back and uh, the uh, 90, Toyota 91 Specialized team need to really focus right now on limiting that loss so that when they can regroup, sit tonight and strategize, they will have a clear plan. They won't have lost too much time because even one minute can make a big difference uh, just to the mind of how much time they have to make up the following day and of course with another six days to go after this or six stages to go after this they have um, there's still everything to play for it's not over yet it's definitely not over yet uh, we will see still a lot of drama a lot of uh, unexpected uh, things to happen that will turn everything upside down again uh, we were expecting today to be super super tough and <laughs> it has it has shown to be extremely brutally tough uh, this team though doesn't look too affected by it. They are having the ride of their life today, huh? Absolutely. Amy Wakefield and uh, Ariane uh, Luti, one minute and 27 down at the start of the day. They are the virtual leaders of the women's race right now. If the race stopped, uh, they are on an absolutely superb day. Wonderful to see eh? Ariane Luti and uh, Amy Wakefield, perhaps in the best condition uh, she has ever been ahead of uh, an APSA Cape Epic, preparing herself for a tilt at the uh, title. It was wide open. We talked about it at the start of uh, the prologue. The uh, women's race was uh, there for the taking. We saw a somewhat surprising, in, in somewhat surprising only in terms of their, their lead up to the race, but not in terms of their pedigree as racers, Pauline Ferrer Ferre and, Ferre and uh, Robin Dekroot, but they took the prologue. And now they are have leaked we know over seven many, minutes. Over seven minutes already. Um, no sign of Candice Lill and, and the Mariska Strauss. They're off the pace as well today. But it's uh, Ariane Luti and Amy Wakefield have taken their opportunity so, so well here today. Very impressive ride. Yeah, very, very, very uh, impressive uh, riding. And well deserved too. I know Ariane has been targeting this uh, race every single year for many, many years. And it's just uh, good to see all that hard work and all the effort and all the desire finally you know it, it comes together fantastic for her and she'll be uh, if it all goes according to plan if uh, everything uh, if everything goes according to the way it's going right now if things continue and they don't have any mechanicals they will find themselves in that leader's jersey and that will be the first time since 2016 that Ariane Luti has worn the leader's jersey at the Absa Cape Epic so it'll be a significant moment for her she's uh, certainly kept uh, she's been highly persistent she's always she's always been a keen campaigner at this race and always been a major factor in the women's racing and uh, she'll get to wear that uh, that coveted jersey once again and it'll be a first time for uh, amy wakefield which will be a, a wonderful occasion for for amy she's she's uh, really worked hard over the years to get herself uh, 
into position to be a real contender and uh, this is uh, just reward for those uh, years of really really hard work and particularly the last year where the target has been to try and uh, get on the podium here at the Absa Cape Epic. She's certainly been a rider that's progressed over the years and uh, just another step up this year and she's uh, right now riding um, at the front of a field of the of the world's very best marathoners. Uh, snaking around these Lawrenceford trails, making their way towards uh, the finish, and this is the race lead. It is Canyon North Wave, Martin Storsek of uh, the Czech Republic and his German partner, Andres Servold. It seems that when it goes down, Il Storsek goes to the front, and on the flats and the climbs, it is uh, the world champion who uh, turns on the power. Uh, world champions are plenty here. Current world champions in uh, Stosek, at least uh, Sievolt, who's the marathon world championship uh, champion. Ten kilometers to go. And the cross-country world champion, of course, is uh, Nino Schurter. And the short track world champion is Chris Blevins. And they're all part of the narrative of today's uh, race. And they're about to hit the 80-kilometer mark of the, uh, the race. There's 10 k's to go, so they've passed the 82-kilometer mark. And uh, very soon we'll see them hit that uh, that time check at the Lawrenceford Farm. And the, uh, it is actually at the 82 kilometer mark, so we're going to be keeping a keen watch on the time gaps from this team, the Canyon North Wave team, back to the, the Buff Megamo team, who are lying second on the trails at the moment. And of course, all eyes on Nino Schurter and Lars Foster as they try to make back that time they've lost from the mechanicals. Riding on uh, some fairly familiar trails along that uh, irrigation canal here on that Lawrenceford uh, farm. They're getting closer to the trails and the, the areas they rode during the uh, prologue as uh, Diaz and uh, Becking give chase in second place today at, on the road at the moment behind this pair of Stosik and uh, Sirvolt. The last split we had was uh, 42 seconds uh, between those two. And then Santa Cruz, Maxime Marat and Keegan Svensson. The French-American uh, combination with 2 minutes and 48 back. So they're, if all things uh, are equal and they stay as they are now, there'll be new leaders of the men's race going into stage two, which will take us uh, a long way to Greaton tomorrow. But really great to see this team oh. uh, shining like they are today. Uh, we saw them last year having to pull out when they were looking like uh, they were about to re really put the hammer down and change the racing uh, last year. Uh, so it's good to see them shining here. It's good to see how last year they, they went out the, on the, of the race. They had to abandon the race, unfortunately, and saying, you know what, next year we'll come back stronger and look how they're going. Yes, uh, the world champion ended up riding as a lonely leopard last year. Uh, but importantly, he carried on riding. And some, sometimes riders uh, of this caliber say, well, my partner's out, I'm out of the race, I'm going to catch an early flight home. But uh, he used it uh, very well, clearly. Uh, not that it's the same terrain, but it's the same uh, format and same uh, race to, to, to get a feel of the Amster Cape Epic. Yes, and the, the riders who lose their partners throughout the race, even if in the amateur category, they're allowed to continue with uh, under different circumstances, different status, you could call it. And in the UCI, in the UCI category, they are they are given the lone leopard status and given a special jersey to wear. Just a, given, just a, it's not just a consolation prize, as to say, uh, really for uh, for having to uh, retire from the race, but also it's an identifier, so that the other riders in the UCI category, where there's also race for, they can identify the riders that are not um, necessarily part of the race. But it still gives the uh, the Europeans and, in fact, any anyone who's dedicated the time. And, uh, and, and, and all of the build-up gives them an opportunity to really experience the race and, uh, and to understand what it's all about. And I think for Andreas Seervold, it was very much a tactical, a, a tactical experience for him as well, where he could really get a sense of what the terrain was like, and he could then uh, really understand it and innately have a sense of of what the uh, what it's all about and what kind of trajectories there are on the climbs, what the trails are like, and what the trail surfaces are like, especially. And that's some factors that are super important in a race like this, having the experience of having done the race before, because coming out of uh, Europe or elsewhere and not in Africa, uh, this is a different terrain. And you need to 
uh, adapt to it because it's rough, uh, it's thorny, it's hot, it's ruggy. This race really has it all. And yeah, having the experience of having done the race before just makes all the difference. And here we are back with Speed Company. And also we have That's uh, the Willier Scott Pirelli Sram. team. Yeah. And also. Scott Sram are back in touch. Yes, they're back in touch with that, that group, that chasing group. We do have just ahead of them, we do... <gasps> oh, that's disaster for this team. They've had such a great day and we did speak too soon. I didn't just wanted to say that I don't want to <laughs> jinx it if everything goes well. But they are having to repair a mechanical and that mechanical is wiping out any of the advantage that they might have over, that they've worked so hard for to create. Let's hope they can get it resolved as soon as possible. It looks like they just need to top up a little bit of air and then they're good to go. Quick fix here. Luckily, no, well, uh, from what we can see, no major damage here, but they will have lost some of that great, great advantage they have built up throughout the entire day. So that happens. You're in the lead. You've got a lead. You're uh, sort of catching a glimpse, maybe, of that uh, leader's jersey, mm. and you lose time. What's going on there? They don't know where they're, they're, how far they're ahead, perhaps, yeah. at this stage. What's happening in the mines? Well, first of all, you know that you need to stay calm. Uh, yeah, luckily here, they're still in yeah, the lead. Yeah. Uh, we could see they were kind of looking, trying to mm. see, OK, mm. uh, is there anybody else coming? And that's the first thing that is on your mind. And the last thing you need to, be on, uh, need to have on your mind is like, <gasps> where are the others? Just focus on, on the job ahead, getting that issue fixed uh, as quickly and efficient as you can so you don't make up make any uh, yeah stupid moves i have uh, speaking of uh, from experience uh, if you stress too much trying to fix whatever you need to fix it can go terribly wrong but here they managed very well uh, got back on their bikes and it looks very smooth and you know they're still they, they're still in the lead and they know that but the having effected the repairs and sorted that out now on back on the bike, just to, to, to again reset, mm. we're still in the lead, we've lost a few seconds, don't panic. Or hang on, half, we, better, we better just uh, open up and reestablish that lead. Um, but they, they are very experienced riders. They know that panicking and trying to push the pace too much to kind of regain uh, whatever time they lost is not ideal. And it looks like they're riding still very much in control and within themselves. And that's exactly what you need to do in this situation. Take the hit and just uh, just manage it uh, from there on in as we mm. go back to uh, Stosek and uh, Sivolt, the leaders in uh, the men's race on a really barren and exposed section of single track as they head down uh, towards uh, Lawrencewood Farm. Back with uh, the women's leaders on the stage. Amy Wakefield and Ariane Luti have just recovered from... Uh, what looked like a, a flat, they uh, reinflated, didn't seem to lose too much time, and they're back on the uh, ride. And significantly, they have not been overtaken by 91 Songo Specialized, who were two minutes back at that, at that time check at the, at the third water point. And uh, the team that, uh, that Simtech really need to look out for is Faces Roller, uh, who uh, they're only 45 seconds behind Faces Roller on general classification. And it looks like that leader's jersey could still be up for grabs for Simtech at the end of the day. So they're still on track to take the race lead if all goes well. And I, we hope we're not jinxing it by saying that. But uh, so far, so good for Ariane Luti and Amy Wakefield. Well, we just caught a glimpse there of uh, the Speed Company racing pair, Ega and Baum. And uh, on their wheel was... Uh, Nino Schurter, Lars Forster, in a world of pain. My word, that man is suffering today. But he's hanging in there and he's being dragged along by the force and the power and the energy of uh, Nino Schurter and the world champion saying, I've got to hang on there. We've, we've got to pull something back here. We've got to make it work. And uh, he's showing uh, just what it takes to, to, to be at the sharp end here and to suffer at the Apsa Cape Epic. Well, from his perspective, you can imagine the pressure that's on you if, you, if you're the, the partner, if you're the, the partner of the, of the nine-time world champion. <laughs> and Nino Schurter is certainly a taskmaster of note. And uh, it's a lot of pressure. And uh, Lars Foster really showed that he was worthy of that, uh, of, of really of, of the, the role that he was playing in uh, 2019 when they won the race. And uh, I think uh, 
perhaps even more credit due to him just for today for the effort that he's putting in to stay in touch and to turn himself inside out. Hopefully that hasn't played a big role in his recovery for tomorrow. It's a long week ahead and uh, he'll be focusing on very much on getting all that nutrition back in, having his ice bath and going through that, uh, going through that procedure that uh, all of the athletes go through at the end of the day just to make sure they recuperate. And um, Annika, you'll be able to talk to that more. There is a routine that uh, every rider goes through at the end of each stage um, to get just to essentially be ready for the following day. Mm. Well, it's quite easy. Rest as much as you can. Of course, get in your nutrition. It's a good idea to have a recovery shake straight after finishing uh, yeah, the race. Uh, a recovery shake containing uh, carbohydrates, some proteins, uh, uh, some salt, uh, lots, lots of fluids, water, and just yeah, take in as much as you can. Um, also, just yeah, eat as much as you can. And it doesn't, it doesn't have to be, of course, you need to ha get your carbohydrates and your proteins, but it's also very much what you feel like eating, because sometimes, not right now, but especially as the week progresses, your appetite gets a little bit funny. And then you need to stick with food that actually that you feel like eating. Um, just get in as much as you can. It's really important. And of course, staying out of the sun, going to the shade. If you have the opportunity to go into some sort of cool room, that would be ideal. Uh, just kind of stay out of the sun and just rest, rest. Yeah, lie down on your back. <laughs> That's all the important yeah. role that the that the big trade teams play is that they have that backup support team that uh, takes you through. Often when, you, when you're when you an athlete and you finish the stage, especially if you've gone as deep as someone like Lars Fasto has gone today, it's great to have somebody who can rationally sit you down and, yeah. and make sure that you follow those routines. And uh, it's uh, gonna be a factor that plays its uh, role throughout the week. It's just that extra support that you get from the bigger teams, from the trade teams. And we've seen the Songo, sorry, the uh, the Specialized Factory Racing Team are absolute experts at that. They are the most successful trade team in the world in stage racing at the moment. So it'll be keen to know just how those team members cope with the rest of the week. Yeah, I mean, mm. Matt Beers is going to perhaps be in a, in a similar situation. He didn't look uh, in, in, in great shape. He hasn't looked in great shape today. He might also be suffering uh, today. What, what was your comfort food when, when you when you want to do salty vinegar chips that's it i remember yes. from like yes salty vinegar chips oh, that from yeah. wednesday on that would be all i craved <laughs> and that would be all the team got for me <laughs> and i loved it <laughs> no it makes all the difference you yeah. know um, because yeah like i said your appetite gets a little bit funny and you consume so much uh, sweet stuff while mm. being out there and sometimes you need to still get all that carbohydrates and all that energy in while finishing after finishing the stage and then you just need to yeah, turn to the food that you want to eat because then the chances are higher that you actually refuel as you should. And especially if you have a really, really tough day mm. like some of these riders are having, it's easy to forget those very important uh, routines after finishing, like keep eating, keep hydrating, just yeah, staying smart, staying calm, relaxing and, and refueling and recovery. So and that's where it helps a lot to have a, a good partner to you know, encourage you and, and you know, is maintain hope for the, the days to come. Because that's actually one of the things that are the most important in this race is you never know what tomorrow brings, but surely something will happen that you did not expect and you're the, everybody else in, in this race will also encounter hard days and issues. So always maintain hope because it's not over. And we're looking at the uh, Canyon Northwave team, that's Seervolt and Martin Stozek, and they have passed through that 82-kilometer mark, the time check, and they are 2 minutes and 33 seconds of ahead of Buff Megamo, and that's Becking and Diaz, who are also showing to be some of the favorites of the race. And in third spot, Santa Cruz passed that check for just under 4 minutes at 3 minutes 57. And looking back significantly, we're seeing that Scott Sram, Nino Schurter, and Lars Foster are 4 minutes 49 back. There we go, a graphic of that, just to get an idea. And the Willia Pirelli team, and that's the team of Ravensteiner and Alleman, the Italian and the Belgian, both respective champions in the marathon discipline of their, of their respective countries. Uh, speed Company racing uh, through their 5.27 down, and uh, Cameron Orr and Daniel Gessmeyer of William Perelli factory in uh, 529 in seventh place through there. So the William 
uh, Pirelli team are having a really good day, and they're a sort of team that we may see come uh, come through later in the in the race and uh, challenge for some stage wins. Meanwhile, this pair have been absolutely impeccable today. Martin Storsek and uh, Andreas Sivolt, they've ridden uh, superbly as a team. And uh, they're closing in on the finish here and a possible stage win and with it the uh, great prize of the leaders jerseys well they're just extending that lead more and more now at two minutes 33 over buff megamo buff megamo the you could say the elastic has snapped a bit they're kind of just under a minute back at the time checks and now it seems that the gaps have absolutely extended now in the latter part of the race this is where the marathoners excel this really is where we would expect them to to ply their trade um, but we are looking back significantly to where the Toyota specialized team the Toyota 91 specialized team and that's the yellow jerseys the yellow jerseys were just over a minute ahead of Canyon North Wave on GC before the start of today and uh, it looks like that's all going to turn around very quickly but minutes are ticking by already six or seven minutes have ticked by since that time check and Canyon North Wave are going to be in a very comfortable lead at the end of the day. Scott, it all goes according to plan. Yeah, Scott Calabandina of uh, Manticon Gutierrez and uh, Carretero are through in eighth uh, through that checkpoint, 5.46 down. And a good day for Insect Science, a South African pair. Keegan Bontekoning and Arda de Toy are the first all-African team in there uh, at that checkpoint, 6.48. Uh, which uh, could play a significant role in them perhaps getting a uh, grip on the Absa African uh, leaders jersey where Marco Yuba and Peter de Toy were the leaders. That's the five kilometer mark. They've just gone past five kilometers to go. Stosk again on the front on the descents. Uh, Sirvolt, the uh, world champion, in uh, his wake now. This is uh, terrain they rode yesterday, the, exactly the same uh, trail. A much wider line there from uh, Sirvolt. Again, that gravelly, loose surface here. You've got to be just a little cautious going around those corners. Mm, especially here the, through the vineyards. Mm. Uh, traditionally, all the corners are the feel of camp because these are not manicured trails. Uh, so the corners are more flat and, and really loose and slippery, as we see here. Uh, the, uh, the world champion, a highly disciplined rider, but it seems to be very, a very good match, these two. We've not seen uh, any one of them shirking responsibilities. Uh, very balanced pairing and obviously highly experienced. They've been working together for a while now and uh, it's showing that Martin Storzak is on an absolute stormer of a ride. Eight minutes and 13 seconds there. Toyota 91 specialized in the yellow jerseys. Matt Beers and Chris Blevins. And uh, they are well off the pace, having uh, endured a torrid day. And uh, on the evidence of what we've seen, it seems Matt Beers is the one who really has suffered today. We'll find out once they get to the finish what uh, issues he's had. He's not alone today because Lars Forster, likewise, has uh, been in a world of pain and difficulty alongside Nino Schurter. And they are currently running in fifth place today, four minutes and 49 seconds uh, down. That's the virtual general classification. And what a, what a turnaround we're seeing here today. Extraordinary. Well, the turnaround we've really seen is the, uh, is the, 90, is the Toyota 91 Specialized team. And they've lost almost three minutes in the space of about nine kilometers, which is not a good sign for the yellow jersey, whereas they will need to just consolidate today. Just right when they get back to the, uh, to the paddock, they'll right today off and look forward because that's really all the choices they have to look forward to the week. There's still auto play for. There's a long week ahead. And uh, certainly this team here, Canyon Northwave team, haven't shown themselves to have a bad day yet. It's, it's two days in so far. They do need to get to the finish, though, and keep their bodies and their bikes in one piece to make sure that they keep that advantage over the, uh, over the yellow jerseys. And most significantly right now, the rising team, Buff Megamo, they were in eighth spot in GC. And now they'll be looking to move very much up the leaderboard into their second spot if all continues as it is now. Debutants Eger and Baum of Speed Company Racing and Santa Cruz's Maxi Marot and Keegan Svensson have uh, kept themselves uh, right in the uh, picture as well. They're nicely positioned. So uh, third place for Santa Cruz on the road at the moment and Speed Company in sixth place and enjoying their 
their ride here and shaking up the uh, the established uh, Absa Cape Epic uh, riders and uh, saying if you're going to try and win stages and win this race, you've got to deal with us. Definitely. And unfortunately, we saw that earlier today the uh, speed company also had to deal with mm. some issues. And if it weren't for those issues, I'm sure we would have seen a different uh, scenario today. So tomorrow's going to be exciting. It's like we draw a line and tomorrow is a new mm. fresh day and it's... Uh, we can see, yeah, yet again, a different scenario play out tomorrow. So much good to come. Yeah, big transition day over 100 kilometers tomorrow as uh, the riders leave Lawrenceville in the Helderberg Bowl. They've got a big uh, portage. They've got to run up uh, the old Hantu Pass, which is a national monument as dust flies off the wheels of uh, Martin Storsek here. They're close to home. And then they uh, traverse through uh, Krabone Elgin, those wonderful uh, trails of Oak Valley and Paul Kluver and across to Great It's a long ride tomorrow, and it'll test everyone. And uh, certainly this pair, well, they'll be in the uh, leader's jerseys if all things go according to plan, which you feel they will as they head now to the Oipa Dam and that uh, uh, swing around the dam. This is familiar. They would have ridden this yesterday in the prologue. And it's always nice to go into a trail that you know. Mm. They know exactly how far they are from the finish because they rode this section uh, just yesterday also at race pace. Um, and you can see they're charging hard now, just gaining every little second that they can, so they know that they will have an advantage uh, on the GC, because they could also... Th you, the thing is, you never know when you're the victim of some uh, unexpected uh, issue, and if, not that I'm jinxing anything, but you need to make that uh, into your decision that, okay... You've got to build that in. Yeah, uh, if we can gain as much time on GC today as we can, that's good, because we could have issues ourselves. Absolutely. And uh, the, 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 I mean, the, the travesty for the uh, Scott Strand pair is that they, they, they had a big issue on, on the prologue. And uh, as we've illustrated and talked about before, there's no way uh, you can get support from your backup team there. And uh, that uh, really has been massively costly. This is Diaz and Becking alongside Thomas Ditch's Bulls Media e-bike. And uh, they are in... Uh, Second place today, uh, Hans Becking and uh, Jose Diaz. Two and a half minutes back behind the Canyon Northwave team. You feel they may have lost more time. You, you'd certainly get that feeling, and their body language isn't necessarily as urgent as uh, we saw at the front of the race. And they've had a lonely time since the uh, middle midpoint of the race when everything started to really stretch out. Um, but uh, they're true professionals. They know exactly what to do. And they have the company of each other, of course. And we cut to the Belgian national champion, the Belgian champion of the marathon discipline, Alemann. And he is leading Ravenstein, the Italian champion. And they're also on a very good day. And this team has never to be discounted. We've seen them at the races for so many years now. And uh, the uh, Willier Pirelli F team are are on a, another good day and another good year by the looks of it. I'm not sure they may have got past Maxi Marat and Keegan Svensson. I'm not sure because we didn't see them between those two teams unless we, we might have missed them. Close to home now. This is uh, Andreas Servalt and uh, Martin Storsek of Canyon North Wave powering, using every pedal stroke to uh, uh, eke out uh, a second or two on their rivals. They'll uh, be closing in two kilometers from the finish here at Lawrenceford Estate puff of dust as they break to enter the sharp left-hander. We see uh, the world champion leading the way there. We've seen uh, Martin Stozak leading the way for quite a bit. And Stozak, although he doesn't hold that uh, that white stripy jersey that the world champion, he is an accomplished rider on his own. He was third at the World Marathon Championships in Turkey in 2020 and uh, on the podium at the European Marathon Championships and, of course, a Czech National Championship to his name. And that is not, not insignificant considering the likes of Jaroslav Kulhavi and Christian Hynek are also Czech riders too. So they're over the, over the Thirsty Bridge. We saw this yesterday in the prologue, and this is a marker that they are almost home. Just hopefully they're taking great care not to take a dip, although it would be tempting <laughs> on such a hot day like today. And... Uh, be looking to get the prizes certainly the uh, stage win looks to be theirs and of course the yellow jersey the overall leaders jerseys spirits must be so high within this team you can see it on the body language they're just going 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 uh, they had quite a good day yesterday and just really today showing that they they're not here they, they're not here for fun they mean business and they're just executing it 
to perfection today. Doing everything right and just having such a good ride. Huh? Yes, that big yellow arch over the finish line is an enticing carrot for this pair. Almost giving it more than they have at any other stage because they know they are closing it up. Get to the finish as quickly as we can and then count the minutes. It won't be seconds, it'll be minutes into the graveyard section, which has uh, been uh, relayed with uh, gravel, which would have been fairly smoothed out after yesterday's prologue, because again, this is a section that was written uh, in that 24-kilometer time trial yesterday. It seems a long time ago, considering these uh, riders have been on the, the road for close on four hours today. They took less than an hour yesterday and uh, today a very very different kettle of fish as testing a stage one as we've seen in the absa cape epico in recent years it always is one of the toughest days of the entire week and this certainly hasn't disappointed in terms of uh, testing the riders and bear in mind this is just the leading team who are coming in uh, to the finish here this is becking and uh, ds popping out of uh, that bit of single track they still have to get to uh, the thirsty floating bridge in the second place Becking and Diaz. A couple orchards on the right hand side as they fly in uh, towards a sharp right hand up beneath those pine trees. And another good performance by this pair who just uh, continued to impress at the Absa Cape Epic but for a disappointing uh, Prologue, a, 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 a somewhat disappointing program last year. Uh, they went on to win three stages and uh, they were eighth in the prologue yesterday. So they are really uh, a team that has to be uh, factored in when uh, considering overall winners of this Absa Cape Epic. Yeah, the prologue certainly not their kind of uh, course, not their kind of race. And it was looking at the time checks from last year to this year, they were almost exactly the same amount of time behind the. Uh, the specialized factory racing team pairing um, as they were. So the times were almost completely comparable, although they, uh, they were in eighth spot and they were tenth at the prologue yes, uh, last year. Um, there's no doubting where their talents lie today. They are absolutely making it count and could well be putting themselves into the second spot on overall GC. Well in touch for a victory that they've been wanting. They came last year and they were uh, very hungry. They won three stages. They had a bad couple of days early on. And we can hear the helicopter overhead. We're in the studio at Lawrenceford Wine Estate. And uh, the victory goes to the Canyon North Wave team. And fantastic performance by the Czech and the German. Martin Storsek and Andreas Servold to have uh, taken stage one honors here at Lawrenceford in a superb ride around uh, the uh, 92 kilometers, 2,800 meters of climbing, a monstrous day in the saddle and they have uh, put together a ride for the ages here. Seervolt and Sorsek won stage three a year ago but this very significantly will put them in the race lead because uh, the leaders going into the stage uh, were in all sorts of trouble and over eight minutes back. What, what a performance. performance. Yeah, impressive. And you can see even though they look so good out there they have given absolutely everything. Storsek, the uh, Czech Republic rider, and uh, Sirvold, the European and world champion, are the stage winners on uh, stage one here at Lawrenceford. An extraordinary day. I think we might just have been so somebody might have cramped me. Yeah. <laughs> but what a performance uh, by these uh, marathon specialists. They've brought good form into the uh, Absa Cape Epic and uh, they've uh, made it count very early on third on the prologue and they were a minute and seven down going into today's stage and they've nailed this one to open up a significant lead on the gc because this is the second team on the uh, trail at the moment and uh, diaz and uh, becking are chasing for all their worth to get to the finish Last little section now, and uh, they'll drop into that uh, forested single track. 
and then bring it home Diaz and Becking real contenders let's pop down quickly before these two come in and hear from uh, the stage winners Martin Stosek, Andreas Sevold, Canyon Northwave, MTB, what a ride you had out today, perfect stage out there, you guys had a fairly uh, conservative um, early stage and then, uh, early on and then you took the initiative up the brutally st uh, steep climb up to the Lawrenceford Neck, was that always the plan early on? I would say uh, not a concrete plan but uh, we, we hoped for it that we can at least do some damage there even if they catch us again in all the trees, but looks like we could do huge damage. <laughs> and also there were some mechanicals on the other teams. So. Yeah. And for the viewers out there, can you explain just how steep that climb up to the Lawrenceford saddle is? Well, it was just on the limit to push in the first in the first gear with the with the 3651. Uh, yeah, just. Push the first gear and just keep pushing. Yeah. And uh, to ride yourself into yellow today, how much would that mean to you guys? If we are in the yellow, that means a lot. I think the one goal is, is done, let's say. We have a stage win and if we, if we go now to the overall lead, that's uh, something that really counts. So we can already be happy, let's say. We'll let you guys get go and get cleaned up. Thank you. And uh, behind them, Hans Becking and Jose Diaz. And then Fabian Rabensteiner and Bart Allemann cross the line in third place. What a day, what a ride they are having. 3.23 back to Becking and Diaz. The uh, Buff Megamo team and then William Pirelli, 3.49. They came storming through the back end of uh, today's stage. Well, we were looking to see what happened to the uh, Santa Cruz team of uh, Marat and Swenson. They were lying third pretty much for most of the, the, the last half of the stage and were overhauled by the William Pirelli team. So just see, that is the podium we've just seen now rounding out the podium is the uh, Italian and the Belgian uh, Belgian team. And, uh, all eyes on the, um, on the French American team coming in right now who've done so well today. Uh, here we go, the riders in black and Maxi Marat, the highly accomplished mountain biker on the, uh, the cross-country circuit. Not a hugely experienced stage racer, um, but still team morale is very good. And they know they've done a good day, putting some major time into their rivals and uh, survived a really a day of absolute uh, chaos. If you look at the trails and the decimation of the field. Oh, and looking and at this, this is Schurter and Forster. They've had a torrid day. Punches and uh, Forster taking uh, uh, plenty of heat, and yet they've come in in fifth place today to try and limit their losses. Scott Sram, they've thrown everything in over this last uh, 20 kilometers or so to limit their losses. Five minutes and 12 seconds they roll in behind Andreas Sevold and Martin Stosek. If you threw all the cards in the air, they've fallen all over the place today for sure. They certainly have, and all credit to their team, the Scott Sram team, and uh, it's, it's no surprise because we are talking about the world champion and the European champion. But considering what's happened to them today, the absolute, they probably had the worst of it today. They've had the worst time of the stage one and they still have managed to come in in fifth place having lost five minutes. At end of the, the week is not lost completely. They still have a chance and uh, they will look to regroup tonight. And the yellow jerseys, if you're talking about time loss, the yellow jerseys have absolutely hemorrhage time in the latter half of the race in fact the latter quarter of the race we were hemorrhaging th I think three minutes uh, Gerald was the, the time that they lost and uh, in, the, in the 8k section that uh, they should have really been consolidating and Matt Beer is clearly suffering in the heat well here comes uh, speed company racing Egger and uh, Baum and uh, they <laughs> you can see they've taken the, the heat today for sure jerseys wide open a little bit of a sprint for the line and uh, the Julia Pirelli pair are in there as well. So uh, teams flying in there, just going back to the yellow jerseys there. You can see even on just on that little kicker up uh, through the forest there, Matt Beers has uh, had a really, really tough day. He's, uh, he's suffering today for sure. But uh, Speed Company, Scott Calabandida and uh, Julia Pirelli Factory Racing, including the top eight. 
and uh, here come the uh, yellow jerseys well nine ten perhaps for them and the clock is ticking well for a, a large rider like uh, matt beers he's an immensely powerful rider but being in such a large frame and having such a large blood volume he will be suffering hugely in this heat and uh, it is 30 degrees out there and that's just the that's in the shade and the measured in the town out on the trails great day for young keegan bonte kuning and uh, he and uh, his uh, partner the insect science uh, team they've uh, flown across honored a toy and keegan bonte kuning they will uh, take the lead in the absa african jerseys uh, category ninth place for them 727 down peter de toy and uh, Marco Hubert, the previous leaders, well, they are over eight to nine minutes back. They've had a very tough day of Buko uh, type dev giants. So uh, there'll be new leaders in that category as well. It's all happening today on a really explosive day on uh, stage one of the Absa Cape Epic. Just an idea of how much time that this team lost. The yellow jerseys have lost over eight minutes already looking at that final time check. And that was at the 82 kilometer mark. We're at 92 at the finish. At the 82 kilometer mark, uh, the team of Toyota 91 Specialized were eight minutes and 13 seconds. And they don't look like they're going to be making much of that time back. In fact, just from the body language and from the way they're riding and from the fact that Matt Beers is getting distance even on the small kickers, it will possibly be almost up to 10 minutes time loss when they get to the finish. Well, they are still not uh, near the finish as uh, Heineck and uh, his partner Ullman come in. Well, significantly, Support that's the backup down. team. That's the backup team of the race, the stage winners today, Seerveld and Stozek. And it's, it's, uh, they're also on good form and coming in in the top 10 and will prove very valuable allies. And we have the yellow jerseys coming in now and just looking to see how much time they have lost. It doesn't look good for the South African and the American. Well, I mean, you could just see them beers are just rolling yeah. across the line there. He wasn't interested in uh, pedaling anymore. No. As uh, soon as he had enough yeah. pedal strokes yeah. to make it over the line, he was like, okay, the That's recovery me. starts here. Yeah. So it's been one of those days for uh, Matt Beers, the Toyota 91 Specialized Team 12th on the day. Ole Hem and Marco Replicati were the team riding in with them. Williams 7C Force 2. So uh, they have lost nine minutes and... Uh, 21 seconds of uh, Toyota 91 Specialized and uh, obviously with that the uh, yellow jerseys uh, go and uh, they've got uh, well a different week ahead of them for sure Christopher Blevins and Matthew Beers. Team Bulls rolling in now Urs Huber former winner and uh, his partner Simon Schneller. So Lawrenceford uh, the scene of great drama in the elite men's race and certainly happening out there in the women's race they've got a way to go still but uh, we've seen a, a change in that uh, category as well but that'll unfold and we'll bring you that uh, once we've just completed the uh, look at the standings here that the results from stage number one Andreas Sivalt, the world champion and Martin Storsik of Canyon Northwave MTB taking the stage win in three hours 58 23 ahead of Hans Becking and Jose Diaz 323 back and Ravenstein and Alaman put in a monster session over the second half of the race to finish 349 back in third place. Marot and Svensson suffered towards the uh, tail end of the stage 450 uh, back in fourth place. Schurter and Foster had trouble early on with a puncture and then Foster suffered as they chased back 512 though in fifth place. Manticon Gutierrez and uh, Guerra Caratero in uh, sixth place and then Eger and Baum the surprise podium finishes in the prologue down in seventh place today, 6.35 down. What a day. No sign of the uh, yellow jerseys in that uh, top six. And we know now they didn't finish in the top ten. It's uh, been a brutally hard day. Indeed it has. But it's all about maintaining hope and never giving up because there will be a lot of drama that we are still yeah we can still look forward to a lot of drama and it, it once again it will turn things a little bit upside down 
Well, I mean, we've seen two days. We've seen all sorts of mechanical issues already. We've seen mm. riders uh, really suffering today. Yeah, so, you know, by law of averages, it's bound to happen to, to other mm. teams. You don't mm. want to... Uh, cast a spell on them, but but that's uh, what uh, what mountain biking is about, and particularly stage racing at uh, this uh, very very high level. Yeah, it's all about, it's all about trying to reset after a really tough day and saying, okay, today was tough. There's a new day tomorrow, and I often experience that myself. If we in the team had a day where we were like, okay, whew, that was a, that was an mm. extremely tough day, you know, next day is like. All of a sudden, you know, everything was like we're flying again. And so it can happen. And it often is the case that if you have a really tough day, the next day it could be different. But if you have a, and, and uh, you know, the, the uh, Canada and Northway have had a really good day, they must also, in the same way, well, yeah, we've had a, we've had a really good day. Mm. We know what can happen. Look, as, as the, they made the point, yeah. we know the guys had punctures behind us. Let's go to the uh, finish and hear from uh, a couple of the contenders. <laughs> Scott MTV, uh, Scott Schramm, MTV Racing, Lars Foster, Nino Schurter, another uh, unfortunate uh, day out there, tough day. Tell us a little bit about what went down out there. Yeah, it was the first day. Everybody's fresh, everyone wants to push. Coming in the front, uh, want to show what they're able to. Able to. We felt good at the start. Uh, we, ca we could push in the first climb, uh, could take the lead in the first downhill. and. Uh, after it, we took it a little, little bit easy, so the, the other teams came in front and uh, pushed hard. And then, uh, yeah, we knew the climb in the middle, the long one, technical steep. It was an important one, uh, but unfortunately, just at the beginning of the climb, we got the flat tire again. We had to do a tubing, uh, and yeah, lost a lot of time. And then after it, we just rode to the finish, made some plates up, but could be better. So that flat, uh, what happened? Was it a stone? Did you uh, run through a thorn there or did you, a pinch flat? I don't know. It was uh, uh, actually in a, in a slow, almost uphill. Probably it was something super sharp uh, in the grass. So uh, I think uh, Lucas, Baum. Lucas also had the flat exactly at the same place. Probably it was a bit of glass or a I don't know. It was not even a hit hit through on the rim. It was like just like so really bad luck. It's actually something uh, it can just happen. It's bad luck, really bad luck. Now we had two days in a row, uh, two flats, two flats that were actually not really <laughs> really something we could do against it. So uh, yeah, we're really looking for looking. Hope we have now the bad luck on our side for the next days, but. Uh, for sure, it wasn't now the ideal start into the epic. And tell us a little bit about putting in a tube as opposed to um, plugging it. Just the first go-to was the tube? Yeah, I saw it was like such a big cut. So uh, we put in a tube. Then uh, we realized the cut is even too big for just the tube. We deflated again. And then uh, luckily Andre came just then and uh, we just changed wheel. And uh, Andre then had to put something underneath probably. Um, yeah, but we lost again, probably more than three minutes again there. And uh, yeah, afterwards it's always hard to, to motivate yourself again when you are that far back. You know, now had uh, two bad, bad days in a row. <laughs> uh, it's mentally also not the easiest, but uh, yeah, it's, it can happen everything. You, we also saw like today uh, with Specialize, it can happen everything. So we try to keep positive and uh, hopefully uh, have the good luck now on our side. Hopefully, hopefully your luck, uh, it, all the bad luck is done now and you're probably a, a lot more dangerous now than at the front. Um, the front teams are going to have to watch out for you guys um, because you've got nothing left to lose. Sure, we try everything. I'll let you guys go get cleaned up. Interesting uh, thoughts there from uh, uh, Nino Schurter and uh, Lars Forster as uh, the Abs African Jersey leaders no more come into the finish line. Mark Hubert, Peter de Toy, Tora Day for that pair of Imbuco type dev giant. Uh, that happens again. Um, uh, this is exactly what this Absa Cape Epic is all about. It's what day one is all about. It is brutally hard. It does test the best riders. And uh, if things go wrong, they can go horribly wrong. And uh, 
you can go from uh, hero to zero very quickly. And mm. it's not just about the mechanicals, yeah. it's about how the riders measure their efforts. We saw in the very first time check that this team that we just saw roll through there and they were looking at a commanding position in that competition, the Abs African Jersey uh, competition. And um, perhaps they just overcooked themselves, staying with the, the very fastest riders in the world. And uh, it's all about pacing, as we know, and just going that much into the red could have affected their performance overall today. An hour in the intense heat that was yesterday's conditions here, 35, in the high 30s, in the middle of the day when they went out in the prologue there. Some riders may have just gone a little bit deeper than they need to. If it was a wonderful race, yes, but they had gone a little bit too deep ahead of what uh, lay uh, for today. Yeah, yeah. It takes a toll. It, it really does. And it all comes down to a will. A major factor is how do you enter this race? How do you, in what kind of shape, mm -hmm. what kind of preparation have you done? Because you can easily uh, make a very hard effort like a prologue yesterday and still recover. But you need to be in a very good shape to have that ability to recover for something like today. Makes all the difference. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> you, know, you turn on the television or we come in and sit down here and start talking about the race on day one or even the day before. But it's what has gone on for the last month, two months, three months. Preparation. Uh, getting everything in line, commitment and uh, training, and uh, that all adds up to what happens on the start line and at the finish line every single day. It makes all the difference. Uh, that your ability to recover fast uh, doesn't just come overnight. It takes a lot of, a lot of training. Uh, you need to take your body through a, a lot of stress uh, training to get that ability to force the body to have a good uh, skill of recovery. Well, 19 teams uh, in on what is uh, already for the top teams a very, very torrid day. Uh, bear in mind that uh, the last uh, riders left the start line over an hour after these elite riders left this morning. Uh, they finished in just over four hours, four and a quarter hours now. Uh, so there's going to be riders who, who are going to be out there for double the time of these riders. It's going to be uh, a truly testing day in true Absa Cape Epic uh, tradition. It's what you expect uh, here on any stage, but uh, uh, particularly stage one, it uh, is one of those things that tests. This is a reflect back, uh, look back at uh, this stage, a few of the uh, moments to uh, look ahead to in the yellow jerseys. Uh, Chris Blevins and Matt Beers. Speed Company racing up there as well, keeping themselves at the uh, sharp end because they'd had such a remarkably good prologue yesterday. Well, little did they know what lay ahead. Well, they knew what lay ahead in, to some degree with the uh, King's uh, climb to come. That came very, very early on. That was dealt with fairly comfortably by most of these. As you heard Lars Forster say, they, everyone wanted to race. Everyone was feeling fresh. And, well, they thought they were feeling fresh at this stage anyway, in the shade as they climbed out of the, uh, the Helderberg Basin. And the, the uh, climb got progressively looser and more torrid and rugged as they headed up through the Helderberg Nature Reserve and then uh, Kingskluwe Farm. And uh, it did test, uh, start taking a toll on the riders, but uh, the Scots Ram pair were up ahead, as were Beers and Blevins, looking to make it hotter early on. Well, we had, uh, you could see there from the uh, early images, just the climb and the, the huge field that is already in, pretty much in touch in the very beginning. Everyone's fresh, everyone's, uh, everyone's got stars in their eyes, everyone believes that they've got their chance at, uh, at glory and at very difficult... Uh, situation where oh yes and we we saw that earlier on team dmt just coming off and uh tricky uh, tricky descent and um, the europeans not always perfectly able to deal with the dry conditions um having not spent as much time as the south africans as the local riders or perhaps the europeans that have spent time in south africa and in the western cape getting used to these trail conditions nino shota flying his trade and showing why he is the world champion Oh, and, and why he just loves mountain biking. Uh, he cannot resist the opportunity to uh, do a jump and do a tail whip and uh, just uh, loves uh, expressing himself. Through the vineyards on the other side of the mountain as they 
traversed numerous of these beautiful uh, wine estates that produce world-class wines here, the likes of uh, Alto and uh, Neutgedacht, Eikendal, Ernie Els, Guardian uh, Peak, as well as uh, Bilton, Stellenzicht and Dornier. And uh, the lead group initially had uh, been five strong and started to uh, consider back together again as they swept down these uh, spectacular trails. Fantastic images of the trails here. And just an, an idea, just from a racing point of view, how stretched out it gets and how important it is to be at the front and why there is such a fight at the front in the early part of the race. And uh, this is the Speed Company team that did so well yesterday. We're looking on the front, and we saw absolute disaster again. Another bad day mechanically for the Scott SRAM team uh, with having to take the rear wheel out. That's always a bad sign when the rear, rear wheel has to come out and repair that puncture. And just an idea of how steep that climb, that saddle climb really was super technical and difficult to keep traction. Bad performance today by the Bulls. Bad luck, not necessarily, but bad luck from the Scott SRAM team catching up to the Bulls team who just really aren't seeming to find their stride this year. Um, had a, not necessarily a great performance at the prologue and today again not on the pace. And uh, just again an idea from just the riders how difficult it is on these courses. We caught a glimpse of the ladies, of the women's team there on the climb, a very tricky technical climb. And uh, but today it was all about the team Canyon North Wave that just saw the advantage, they saw the opportunity that they had to make up the time. They know very well how easy it is to have a bad day. And on the topic of bad days, the yellow jersey team of Matt Beers and Christopher Blevins struggling today in the heat. Certainly uh, this pair suffered the yellow jerseys. Maxi Marot and uh, Keegan Swenson were with them. And another suffering uh, pair were the uh, Buka Taitev, uh, giant pair, Peter de Toy here and Marco Hubert losing the grip on the Absa African jerseys as the day wore on. They had taken enormous strain on the climbs. Lars Forster, well, it wasn't his best day, but they had had uh, issues with those punctures, as you heard, uh, may have heard uh, you know, Schurter explain plenty of time lost to changing. Lucas Baum, Baum had also had a puncture at the same stage for Speed Company. But there was no problem about the speed of this pair. Martin Storsek leading on the descents with uh, the world champion uh, Andreas Sevold be uh, absolutely superb all the way through the day. And the signs that Matt Beers was taking a strain early on here. Well, as a bigger rider, he would always struggle in the heat and especially so today, just when everyone's on that limit, when it's just really just small single percentages or even less of it, less than um, than half a percent of of pace that really that they have to match it just makes the rider just heats up someone who's uh, got the blood volume of someone like Matt Beers uh, will always struggle to dissipate that heat when the smaller riders will make uh, will just make short work of it and uh, of course just seeing the Canyon North Wave team really driving home that advantage and hunting down the uh, riders you can see the gaps opening up hugely here as uh, as we see the yellow jerseys just losing time hand over fist on the Canyon North Wave team, who initially early on in the, um, so before we started the day on GC, Canyon North Wave had a minute over, uh, had a, a minute deficit to the specialized team. And of course, making sure that that is, uh, that they're taking advantage of anything that they have, any chance that they have to extend that lead they're taking. And Speed Company Racing, Following the Scott SRAM team. Not a bad team to let your, your, uh, hit your wagon to. Whilst uh, Maxi Marot and Keegan Swenson had a really strong first half of the race. They started to take a bit of strain towards the back end uh, of the stage. And uh, we're slowly but surely are being closed down. But uh, there was no question that the yellow jerseys were in uh, all manner of uh, trouble. Whilst uh, there they are at... Uh, the water point and beers just uh, by all accounts not able to fuel sufficiently he uh, suffered in the heat he suffered in the heat earlier this year in a major one day race uh, in the claim career uh, one incidentally in in extreme conditions in 40 degree heat 
by a Danish rider, Simon Andreasen, who just popped out from uh, from Scandinavia to win in the most torrid race uh, imaginable. But uh, Beers really was uh, suffering there, so he doesn't function too well in the heat. Who does? But uh, some suffer more than others. Meanwhile, it was Storsek and Seervolt who pinned their ears back as they hit familiar trails at Lawrenceford and powered towards the finish. Well, both of these athletes are very well versed in marathon racing and in fact in one of the hardest marathon world championships in history. Andreas Seewald prevailed so he knows what it's all about in these tough conditions. Yeah and it was hot and that, that was extremely hot uh, those world championships last year so uh, yep this is familiar. This is Hans Becking and uh, Jose Diaz and they had uh, slowly but surely worked their way into uh, a, a solid second place ahead of uh, Maxime Marot and uh, Keegan Swenson and uh, the other chasing teams, but it was uh, no way they were going to catch this pair because Sjöwald and uh, Storsek did not put a foot wrong. They were absolutely supreme today, riding brilliantly as a combination and uh, taking turns on the front and looking after each other as best they possibly could to uh, get to the finish in great shape. And they spent some time in the Grand Canaries preparing for this with similar conditions in the heat. So they definitely had this race, perhaps even this stage, targeted uh, where to gain time. And uh, really, even though the last 15 kilometers, they were gaining minute by minute over the uh, over the next place team, um, Team Buff Megamo. And uh, definitely from their body language at the finish, they emptied it all out. They gave it absolutely everything they had knowing they needed to take advantage of a good day out at the Absa Cape Epic. Hans Becky and Jose Diaz of Buff Megamo taking uh, second place and a delighted Willia Pirelli pair. Fabian Rabenstein and Bart Alleman taking third. And uh, an excellent day out for the insect science pair. Keegan Bontekun and Arno de Toy to uh, collect the Absa African jersey today because there was no way that uh, Peter de Toy and Mark Hubert were going to be able to recover the time they had lost. Likewise for the uh, uh, Toyota 91 Specialized pair, first while leaders in the yellow jerseys no longer because they finished in 12th place today and well off the pace and they have to reset and prepare for a very different approach to the remainder of the week. Drama all round today on stage one of the APSA Cape Epic as ever. It's what you would expect from an event like this. We heard earlier from uh, Nino Schurter that uh, Andri Fischnecht and Yuri Ranioli had stopped to help them and donate a wheel. Hence, they coming in now 29 minutes down. So their, their race is on its head in terms of uh, how they approach the rest of the week because uh, they've lost a lot of time, uh, Fischnecht and Ranioli, uh, not only in respect of the overall, but, the, but in respect of uh, the distance between them and, the, and the, uh, their race uh, leaders. So. It's going to be a fascinating way to see how Scott Stram come back. Nino talked about uh, mentally it was a, it's a blow for them. Well, He's a winner. They're both winners. They're both winners. They're both used to riding at the front, um, but they never give up. They yeah. know exactly what it takes. They've identified all of the factors that really make a difference at this race, and they'll know never to, never to, just never to give up. Really, that's all it comes comes to. And they really saved the day, in my opinion. Um, they only lost five minutes today. They lost four minutes today. It's really not. They still have a, a very real chance of a podium, and possibly if um, Andreas Sievold have a bad day, um, or if Andreas Sievold and Stozak have a bad day, that's uh, there's still all to play for in this. They are still very much in contention and they are able to match the very best pedal stroke for pedal stroke. If you look at all of the times from uh, from the prologue yesterday and if you look at today's, they made up huge. They really, there was no team today that had it worse than Scott Sram and they still still came out in the top five. Thanks, Dad, for doing my hair. <laughs> what well. I found interesting about uh, Nino Schota's interview is just how aware he was of the yellow jersey. He knew immediately. He telegraphed immediately that the, that the yellow jersey was in trouble, and that was one of the things he picked up on. So he definitely is still got his, he's still got his eye on that yellow jersey. And uh, I guess as a racer, as a, as a winning instinct, uh, as a, with the winning and the killer instinct blood. that he has, he sensed blood and he understands that uh, really innately that anything can happen. And just what happened to uh, Matt Beers could easily happen to another team.
Here is the uh, podium uh, from today's stage. Uh, Rappensteiner and Alleman on the right in third place. Then Becking and Diaz in second. And about to step up onto the podium as stage winners. Stosek and Sivolt. Okay, second stage, second stage win. win, having won last year in uh, Tilbach. And uh, things went uh, sadly wrong for them overnight, unfortunately, there. And uh, they couldn't finish the race together. But uh, they will uh, celebrate today for sure an extraordinarily good stage. And a great day for Alleman because it's his first time on the podium at the Absa K. Pepek in his debut race. And uh, he'll be extremely excited. His smile is certainly the broadest on that podium. In the foreground here, uh, Eric Kleinantz, a multiple uh, uh, mixed winner here. He's looking after the Canyon team, but he's also uh, designated as no doubt the team photographer because he's taking the photographs there as well. But uh, he'll be delighted with the way the team has gone. The Canyon North Wave, they are going to be in the race lead come the start tomorrow. We'll see that uh, fairly shortly. Well, Dry, dusty, and hot it is here at uh, Lawrence for typical uh, summer months. Here is the yellow, new yellow jerseys for uh, the world champion Andreas Sivolt on the left, and alongside him, Martin Storsek, a former world championship bronze medalist. And a formidable combination they proved to be today, and no doubt going forward in the Absecape Epic. They'll have the Overall general classification lead. And uh, I'm sure it will be a real uh, boost to their morale to be in the yellow jerseys uh, already. Uh, yeah, on stage one. I'm sure they, going into this year's race, had their eyes well targeted on the yellow jersey, and now they find themselves in the yellow jersey. It's the ideal position to be in. So. It's a good, good uh, start to the race, and I'm sure they'll, yeah, they'll be on really high spirits and good morale for tomorrow. And just uh, looking at that general classification, five minutes and four seconds. Becking and Diaz are behind in second place, and then Maxi Marot and Keegan Svensson. Well, they are 5:57, so just 53 seconds behind Becking and Diaz. That's going to be a, a race. Uh, between those two, Eger and uh, Baum, not too far back either. So uh, just over a minute between second and fourth. Fabian Ravenstein and Wart Alleman, 6.25. So all very close uh, behind the uh, overall leaders. There we go. Uh, this is the results of stage one. Sievold and Storsek winning in three hours, 58 minutes and 23 seconds. Hans Becking and Jose Diaz. And then Fabian Rabenstein and uh, Bart Allemann completing the podium. Marot and Svensson fourth on the day. Schurter and Foster of Scott Schramm. Uh, Identity of another puncture and uh, plenty of time lost. Well, you take that out of the equation. Five minutes and 12. They've had a, yeah, uh, two days in which they've lost. Uh, you know, the time stood still fixing. Uh, probably four minutes, four and a half minutes, maybe more. Um, they'd be right up there, and they know that as well. They've, they've got the shape, they've got the form. The firepower is there for sure, and uh, it just takes a bad puncture from Sievald or, or Becking or Diaz or any of the riders can have a bad day. And um, just a little bit of a question mark about those tyres that Nino Schurter was running. And we heard rumblings in the paddock uh, about them running slightly, uh, a, a tyre with slightly less tread on it. Um, it would be hard to imagine that they would take risks like that because it is a highly professional and highly drilled team. But uh, maybe it might be a discussion that they'll have over dinner as to which tyres are best suited to the conditions. Well, there's uh, confirmation of the fall for Beers and Blevins down to 12th place, nine minutes and 21 down today. Beers is the man who really suffered today in the intense heat and as a result to 91 that specialized have lost the yellow jersey new leaders in the Af african jersey great day for young keegan bonte and the experienced partner arno de Troy of insect science seven minutes and 27 down after stage one uh, a really good performance top 10 finish for them well it's been a it is a beautifully hot day here in the uh, 
in Lawrence Fitton. We've still got plenty of racing to bring you in the women's race uh, as they head towards the finish, but just looking at the general classification, confirming backing in DS five minutes and four seconds down behind uh, Sewald and Stosek, Marot and Swenson in uh, their first Absa Cape Epic journey. Likewise, Eger and Baum, Alleman in his first uh, Absa Cape Epic. So there's plenty of new riders uh, in the mix here, which is uh, really exciting as adding uh, a new dimension to, to this week's racing. Oh, that's true. Uh, this uh, race uh, is iconic and it keeps attracting, you know, new riders who want to try it out because you don't really know what it is unless you've done it yourself. Well, from sure. second to ninth, there's, it's still really all to play for. It's all under nine minutes. Of course, the gap between first and second is significant at over five minutes. Canyon Northway have done a great job today. But from second place to ninth place, there's still not a lot of time. And if we take a look back, just remind ourselves that uh, in 2021, if we look at the GC after stage seven, at the final GC, the first and third spots were separated by 14 and a half minutes. So it's really not over for any of these teams now. And even the gap between first and second was uh, almost nine minutes. So it's uh, still a lot to play for, for even for the likes of, uh, for the likes of Nino Schurter and uh, Lars Boster, there's, uh, there's um, I think not there were, there were almost nine minutes uh, yeah. back there. There is uh, there's still time for them to to claw that uh, disadvantage back. And we've said already they have the form, uh, they know exactly what they have to do, and as we said, it just takes a couple of bad days on the side of Canyon Northway. They have got better provisions in place. They've got a backup team, and they've got a really good support staff around them. But uh, even if they're just chasing the podium, Scott Sram could uh, could end up very easily be end up be, end up being on that podium. Just confirming to Toy and Dubert's travails today from Buko Type Dev Giant. They uh, seven minutes and forty eight seconds behind Bonte Kuning and Arno du Toy of Insect Science with uh, Christian Jans van Rensburg and Mark Pritzen, two uh, road racers for Team Honeycomb. Pritzen, a uh, uh, South African champion on the road a couple of uh, years ago, in uh, third place. We focus now on the women's race, and uh, this is uh, the leading team. And, uh, well, we've seen a turnaround here because when last we saw them, Amy uh, Wakefield and Ariane Luti were the race leaders. And uh, we saw them have a puncture and uh, repair that and get back on the road. By all accounts, they had a second mechanical, and uh, they've been passed by uh, Gomez uh, Villafan and uh, Hayley Batten who now find themselves in the lead. And you can see Sophia here on the back wheel of uh, Haley, just having a little bit of a glimpse over her shoulder just to see, okay, do we, still, do we still manage to pull out this gap? Do we still have the lead? So, and you can see, yeah, very differently to the pictures we saw of this team uh, earlier on. Now they're mo much more riding as a unit. They are close together, not leaving too much gap between them, really optimizing on, on the teamwork. Uh, this, is, this is good riding. This is really good riding. And it just, c just proves again that every team, no matter who you are, every single team has a bad moment in the race. And their ba bad moment was surely on that saddle climb. It was the climb that we identified as being a separator, as being significant. But, uh, of course, the uh, things can turn around really fast in a race, and they've turned around in just in a matter of hours. And this team now, 91 Songo Specialized, have over a minute advantage, a minute 10 advantage by our calculations over Team Simtex, Luti and Wakefield. And in third spot on the trails, around about three minutes back, is Faces Roller, Candice Lil and Mariska Strauss. They are still in contention, even f just for the stage, certainly for a podium spot today and for overall. And we still have seen absolutely no sign of Team BMC racing. Last time we spotted them was at the 74-kilometer 70, the mark, and that was a situation that was pretty disappointing for the fans and for themselves at over 8 minutes. 8 minutes, 32 back at that water point at 72 kilometers. And it's a tricky section between the 74 kilometer mark and the 82 kilometer mark where we saw Matt Beers and uh, Christopher Blevins lose uh, almost three minutes just in that short, uh, that very long eight kilometers it seems. So at that time check at 82 kilometers, we still have not seen Team BMC racing. Only the first three teams have been through there. Here we really see uh, this team benefiting from Haley being in a good shape. She's um, yeah, capable of going to the front, uh, providing a good uh, shelter to her partner, letting her, her partner Sophia draft on her wheel. And they work 
we see them now working much better together than we have uh, at any point in this race. Uh, they're starting to really get the, the grip and the feel uh, of what it means to be successful in this kind of racing. They're doing well right now. And they know they don't have uh, much to go before the finish line. And if they can gain an advantage, like any second it matters, uh, just yeah, build on, on the gap. Um, it makes all that different. Uh, and it will be close in the the overall two. I think if they do well, they will likely see themselves in the yellow jersey. But yeah. they need to build, the need to open up the gap a little bit more. Yeah. They'll need to make take that just like uh, the Canyon Northwave team took the advantage. They took their chance, and uh, they didn't have to go absolutely full gas. They arrived at the finish almost completely empty. They were still really just from their body language. It looked like they'd given their all, and it wasn't necessary to win that stage. They didn't have to. They had a plenty plenty of advantage, but they knew they had to make hay while the sun shines. With having a good day, you need to gain as much time as possible, and it will be the same for this team. The 91 Songo Specialized team, um, over a minute at that last time check at the 82 kilometer mark over at Team Simtech ZA. We have just got news about the BMC mountain bike racing. That's Pauline Ferrand Prevost and Robin de Kroot are 9 minutes and 19 seconds back at that time check at the 82 kilometer mark. Well, just like the men, we're seeing a uh, change in uh, the. Uh, ownership of the leaders jersey because uh, there's no question they are going to uh, uh, lose those and there's every chance that this pair will take that uh, jersey because they started the day one minute and 31 behind bmc mountain bike racing but significantly uh, they were just four seconds behind arian uh, luti and amy wakefield uh, who are at the moment uh, one minute and ten down on them so there's uh, every chance and then uh, candace Dillon, and mariska strauss will there was around a minute between them and uh, Sofia gomez Villafan and Haley Batten. And at the moment, they sit three minutes down. So uh, we're looking at the moment at the virtual uh, uh, leaders of the APSA Cape Epic on uh, stage one in the women's race. Let's just uh, pop quickly to the finish and uh, hear from uh, Jazz, who's got a couple of the finishes with him. Jose Diaz, Hans Becking, Buff Magamo, solid day out there. Second place on the stage, tough day. Yes, uh, super hot and dusty day, but we try to to save the day and and uh, improve, like always. And super happy with the second place and the finish line. And the the steady ride early on, and then um, did you put some gas up on the climbs, or how how did you attack the day? Well, <laughs> the the big climb in the middle is just a struggle to get up. It's not really attacking; it's just keeping the the pedals round and and getting up there. We even have to go by foot. It was really brutal. But yeah, we, last year we were a bit scared in the beginning of the race and we had a lot of confidence from last year and we just went more in the front of the race being at the high end and finally it's very important in this race to, in the single tracks, be in the front and at the right moment we were there and to finish second already early in the week is it's really good for us. Let's talk a little bit about those single tracks. There's obviously, there were lots of technical uh, Jeep track descents but also the single tracks were super technical today. Yeah, really dusty. They're a bit. If you go in second position already, when we basically we're riding half states alone, and I tried to follow him, and the moment you get five to ten meters behind, it's just really difficult to see the stone. So all you need to stay really close or a bit farther. But it was epic, brutal, Cape Epic. It's nothing compared to to last year when everything was smooth, uh, dry, not so dusty, not so hot. And this year, just flashback to five years ago when I did my last Cape Epic. It's just suffering, hot, uh, brutal. But I love it. <laughs> and in that heat, how important is the nutrition and to keep drinking? Yes, yes. This is, I think, is the key of for this whole week is the nutrition and all time take care about the drinking and eat and uh, take care of your body and listen very, very, very well. Well, get out there, get home, and um, go and take care of those bodies. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Matt Beers, Christopher Blevins, uh, tough, hot day in the saddle. Didn't quite go according to plan. No, far from it. Um, yeah, I just struggled really bad with um, stomach issues and um, not too sure what happened. Just completely empty, just vomiting everything I could, eat, trying to eat. Just one of those days. Shows a lot of character to, to soldier on though and, and manage the, the losses? Yeah, we, there's no choice to quit. Um, 
now we just need to try and do what we can for the rest of the race. Oh, it's race on now, right? Yeah, lots of days left. Um, you know, massive champ for um, keeping it going through that. Um, and we've got a good team around us to make sure we can bounce back. And like I said, lots of races left. And tell us a little bit about that climb up to the Lawrenceford neck. I mean, that was stupidly steep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was joking with uh, Keegan, the, my American friend. Uh, it felt like you were in a Stairmaster in the gym. Like, you're just barely moving. And it's, uh, you know, you're, you're sweating out of your eyeballs. But um, made for a proper race. Go rest up. Meanwhile, on the trails, the uh, stable mates are going very well here to redeem uh, uh, the day a little bit uh, for the specialized camp. Yeah, we can see here really Sungo uh, yeah, 91 specialized um, coming into to good form. We saw them struggling early on on today's uh, stage. Uh, that brutally, brutally steep, steep climb really uh, took its toll on this team. Um, and we thought they were a little bit out of contention. Uh, because we saw uh, Arian and Amy just flying away uh, into the horizon, having uh, the best of all days. Uh, unfortunately, bad luck struck them not only once, but twice. And this team, uh, finding the rhythm again, could kind of uh, benefit uh, from that. And now they find themselves in the lead. Yeah, it's a big boost, isn't it? You've had a tough first half. That climb took its toll on them. And you start fighting back, but you see the lead disappearing. And uh, uh, Amy uh, uh, Wakefield and Ariane Luti are up the road. And we think, well, we, we, we maybe just have to settle for second. Yeah, that's fine. We're doing well. Suddenly, you find the lead, you, yourself in the lead. lead the, the change in, the, in the, the mental aspect, the positivity that, that, that must uh, uh, flow into the riders it must be amazing. Yeah, it gives a massive yeah. boost. Uh, it, it's really all you need. And quite uh, significantly, we can also see how they work. They ride as a unit now. Everything changed for this team. Looking very strong are Sofia Gomez, uh, Via Fan, and Haley Batten of uh, 91 Songo Specialized. Ariane Lutian, Amy Wakefield, the uh, leaders for, well, once they came over the saddle and into the uh, Lawrenceford uh, Bowl. Uh, they were the leaders as we saw them have one puncture and then another. And so they are now uh, over a minute back, one minute and 10 seconds at last we checked. Candice Hill and Mariska Strauss over three minutes back. They were second uh, going into the stage by 40 odd seconds. And then BMC MTB racing the big losers today. They were the leaders going into the stage. Pauline Ferran Prevo and Robin de Kruet now nine minutes back. Yes, and what we were talking about earlier is just a reminder to uh, to the riders and to the racers that uh, never give up. Mm. There's always uh, there's always a chance, and everyone has uh, their own challenges, and uh, it may seem insurmountable, but uh, the never give up philosophy is a in fact it's a reminder to us all. Keep going. Yep, as we heard there from Matt, Matt Beers, I mean he looked absolutely empty, even sitting there on the on the uh, bench there, pale and and drawn. He's he's. Uh, given it absolutely everything, but he's not given up. He's uh, dug deep and said, we're going to get there and uh, we get through today. Uh, I'll wake up tomorrow and we'll uh, give it another go and uh, see what they can do. There's still plenty of time and that's the thing. It's still so early. Uh, there's some monstrous stages, two stages over 100 kilometers to come. And uh, there's plenty of uh, riding and racing and time to be gained and lost by teams all over the place. Definitely. And even though uh, Amy and Ariane had a lot of bad luck today, we saw how strong they were. Yeah. I mean, they are capable of uh, going for, yeah, still for the, for the leaders' uh, jerseys. I wouldn't count that out of the picture at all because we saw their strengths. Unfortunately, they were hit by a lot of bad luck and that is kind of one of the premises uh, in this race. There's so many factors that you cannot control, but you can kind of control your training, your preparation, how you show up. Uh, like Arian said, you can you can control your attitude and what you do and, and your efforts. Uh, and uh, if they get it all right in the, in the coming days, we haven't seen the last of that team at all. Absolutely not. Uh, they would have gained great confidence, uh, not just standing their mechanical, they would have gained great confidence in today's uh, mm. ride. We just saw Via Finer lead the way over the Thirsty Bridge and uh, looking good for that stage when we'd never like to speak too soon. Mechanicals can strike at any time. But it looks like they are going to be riding their way into this stage win. And uh, looking back at the, at the teams that have passed through that time check, Simtech, ZA, and Faces Roller, uh, 
quite some distance away from BMC mountain bike racing. So that leader's jersey will swap shoulders today, no matter what. Absolutely. Uh, this pair have been uh, exemplary in keeping their focus uh, under intense pressure and uh, then taking their opportunity uh, when it presented itself. Hayley Batten and uh, Sofia Gomez at Villafan Batten in her go. first Absa Cape Epic. But as we've seen before, uh, the specialized camp uh, bring riders here in supreme condition and really, really capable of uh, performing at the highest level. And uh, we saw last year two uh, young riders arrive at their first uh, Absa Cape Epic and demolish the field in their very first uh, ride in uh, Sina Fry and Laura Stigger. Yeah. It really makes all the difference to have a good team around you. Um, everything is taken care of. There's very little you have to worry about or think about because it's uh, all being taken care of by somebody else. You basically just, and I'm saying just <laughs> with <laughs> uh, because it is hard to get through every single day, but you, you can focus. You can really focus all your energy on performing on your bike. And that's uh, a dream scenario. You can hear the applause. It's a holiday out here in uh, South Africa today, so plenty of people have uh, taken the opportunity to come out and watch uh, the best riders in the world, as well as their own friends, family and uh, acquaintances uh, get to grips with uh, the stage here at the Absa Cape Epic. And uh, these two will be welcoming that support all the way around. Toyota 91, uh, sorry, the Sango 91 specialized team here working super well together and you can see they f they seem uh, more equal how say like equally matched right now because they can actually take turns at the front um up until now we saw Haley uh, f really f looking like from uh, the outside looking like the stronger rider being a lot at the front but now it seems like the uh, morale is high all over within this team and they're taking turns at the front and that's a, that's a good sign Yep. It's a very good sign for the team, and we did see a Viafina really struggling on that saddle climb. That was really her bad, probably her worst moment so far at the Absa Cape Epic. And just to be able to turn that around and get that momentum, that swing that happens when you go from really having a terrible moment to um, recovering from that, getting into second, and then, of course, taking the lead in the race. It's all about, uh, it's all about morale and all about that momentum that you keep, and they'll be looking to carry that momentum all the way through to the following day basically the only thing that's on these two women's uh, mind right now is to gain as many seconds on their rivals as they can because it all matters and you never know when you need those extra seconds that you can gain so it's full front to the finish line for sure and the margins are much narrower here in the women's race as uh, sofia gomez villafan and uh, her partner, Hayley Batten, uh, turn the last corner and head to the finish to take stage victory on stage one at the Absa Cape Epic. 91 Songos specialized are back at the top of the podium once again. Batten and uh, Gomez Villafan, stage winners here at Lawrenceford. Another superb ride by uh, a very, very strong combination. And they're looking in uh, very, very good shape indeed to take the leader's jerseys perhaps as well. We'll wait and see. The clock is ticking. But uh, certainly the overall leaders uh, are out of contention going into today's stage. But it depends what happens behind them. Ariane Luti and Amy Wakefield are chasing hard. They're, they are changing hard. And I have a feeling it won't be that many seconds before we will see them popping into the picture uh, and these final trails and, and the venue here again. Uh, we saw them being in good shape, uh, carrying a lot of speed, a lot of momentum, good teamwork. Uh, unfortunately, they had to deal with not only one, but two mechanicals, two flat tires. And of course, that breaks your rhythm a little bit, but we still see them going strong and still in second position uh, on today's uh, stage so far. I expect them any time here uh, at the venue. Yes, Ariane Luti and Amy Wakefield. Uh, yeah, regardless, uh, let's hope they haven't had another issue, but uh, regardless of, uh, of those issues, they've put in an excellent ride today and they'll be feeling very, very confident. Although they are not able to uh, put the finishing touches and win the stage, they'll be pleased with the way uh, they've ridden. Meanwhile, uh, Gomez, uh, Villafan and Batten, here they come then. Uh, Amy Wakefield on the front here, Ariane Luti behind her. 
A, another podium finish for this pair. It could have been different if not for mechanical issues, but they're putting the finishing touches to an excellent ride. Second place on the day. Luti's delighted as uh, Wakefield is. What a performance by this pair. The South African Swiss combination takes second place on this stage here at Lawrenceford. What a performance. They showed that they were the dominant team out there before disaster struck, and they had to deal with the, the two issues. Still a good ride, and morale is high because they know that they are in good shape. They certainly do, and uh, it's all about what you can do and, uh, and how you come back from those bad moments. But clearly, if you just were to look at the firepower, it's, it's really, we can see that the teams with the, uh, the, the biggest engines right now are really showing their colors. We've seen in the men's, Scott Sram are definitely on the pace, as are Canyon Northwave. And the women's, certainly it looks like it's starting to develop into a battle between 91 Songo Specialized and Team Simtech. Simtech showing great things in the midsection of the race. Let's go down and hear from the stage winners with Jazz. Sophia Gomez, Haley Batten, um, 91 Songo Specialized. That was a yo-yo stage. Oh my gosh, I think that's, you know, I always say I'd rather have a tight race than just win easy. I think that that type of racing, especially after almost five hours, it's like, it makes this race truly epic. And I, it's amazing to see that from the women's category. I don't, I think we knew it was gonna be tight racing, but to actually be out there and mentally like, really dig in when it already hurts is yeah it's it's gonna be game on the rest of the day ahead. <laughs> so you were you were fast early on and, and did the racing and then up the steep climb uh, Amy and Ariane overtook you oh and more than overtook <laughs> I mean they came flying um, yeah. I knew that climb was gonna be steep but I had no idea how steep it was I probably should have had a smaller cheese ring on but you know I rode my own pace and uh, yeah I was hurting for a while and this is why this the girl is such a great partner. She kept me positive. She reminded me to eat, to drink. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we kind of, like, rallied on. And, yeah, we did have a little bit of a gift with the girls having a mechanical. But, you know, that's also the race. You can't just go full gas on the descents because you get a mechanical and it takes you back. And, uh, yeah, those last 10K, I forgot how long 10K is. Long. Every like the last two K, you see the signs. You're like, we're almost there. But really, that was the slowest part of the race. I was like, get me home. <laughs> Tell me, how do you uh, get that motivation back after you've been overtaken like that? Just to stay focused, ride your own pace, and push ahead. Yeah, I mean, I think you have to realize. I mean, even today, we still have six days to go. So at the end of the day, it's making sure that you're in the right headspace, and that's all you can do. You know, you you cannot control the other riders. You're only it's only up to you and your teammate, and that's really all you can control. And so just doing your best and realizing that, all right, I trained for this, and now I just need to be in the right headspace to get me to the finish line as fast as possible. Yeah. And I think, oh, sorry, and I think sometimes it's like having that mid-race where you kind of slow it down a bit, and uh, in the last 10, 20 Ks, when people start to crack, so if you can really ride fast then, you actually make up probably more time. But, uh, yeah, that was hard today. <laughs> queen, so hard. queen stage done. <laughs> Thank you very much. Go and rest up. Yeah, thank you. Uh, wonderfully engaging uh, communication chat with uh, Haley Batten and Sofia Gomez at Via Fun, uh, giving us uh, a real insight into uh, how they got through today and uh, a combination that clearly uh, works well together. They are uh, on the same wavelength, you feel. Yeah, you can see how they, they grow as a team. And that's uh, one of the things that I really love about this race. Uh, you start out a relati relatively like untested pairing. And because this race throws so much at you, you go through ups and downs together and you grow as a team. And it's a wonderful feeling. And it seems like this team is, is really growing at the moment. And uh, it's good. Just uh, whilst they were talking, you may have seen uh, Candice Lill and Mariska Strauss, the faces roller pair. Uh, rolled in in uh, three minutes and 42 seconds uh, behind uh, Haley Batten and Sophia Gomez Villafan. Uh, so third on the stage, second uh, were Ariane Luti and Amy Wakefield, and then Batten and Villafan. So that's how the uh, standings are on the stage, and uh, it's in all likelihood how they'll be on the general classification as well, because no sign yet of the overall leaders, Pauline Farron Prevost and Robin de Groot. Confirmation of that. Uh, stage results. Batten and Gomez Villafan. 91 Songo specialized are back at uh, the top. Four hours, 50 minutes, and uh, two seconds. A really, really hard, long stage for all these uh, teams. Lutian Wakefield, Simtech ZA, 
one minute and 49 seconds back. Uh, they lost time due to a puncture. And uh, we catch a glimpse there over the thirsty bridge of the erstwhile uh, race leaders in the uh, CM.com women's race. And Lillian Strauss in third place. Let's go down to uh, Jazz again, and he's got the second place uh, Simtech ZA team with him. Simtech ZA, Amy, Ariane, um, that was a proper battle out there today. Tell us a little bit about the yo-yo the, the of back and forth. Uh, today we went out, I must say, Ariane, she's in charge of the pacing. So I'm like, I'm just so grateful for her. She said, we just watched the watts. So we're actually coming, I think, fifth or something. Um, in the beginning, we just let everyone go and we just, I just let her be in control of the pace and we just sort of kept catching teams and then uh, we got away on that big climb uh, sort of in the middle at 40 k's. And then Ari got a puncture, we were leading quite well and then Ari got a bit of a puncture in her wheel. Um, so we plugged it twice and we had to keep, keep bombing it, we just couldn't find where it was and we changed the wheel. But I think it didn't lose us that much time. Uh, we dealt with it really well and kept calm and yeah, so I think we're really happy with second and we're not too far off first. Ariane, that puncture, do you have any idea how it happened? <laughs> Tired legs, too heavy on the wheel, <laughs> too many rocks. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, just pinch flatted it. I was a bit too heavy on my bike down there. I had a bit of wobbly, a little bit of tired legs. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's what happens. Huh? I mean, luckily we kept it cool and consistent. I must say the heat really, really took it out of me today. I'm glad we uh, played our pacing strategy as we did. I played out really, really well. Um, just a bit of an untimely flat, but we keep going. How do you stay focused? So, you're like leading and then getting a flat, how do you stay focused and not worry too much about Songo Specialized coming charging up? No, you, you can't get this, uh, let it get to you, like really, like you, you just need to keep in your zone and I mean, all you can do is like fix this thing, keep going, um, keep rolling, <laughs> really, like you, you, you just focus on what you do and, and not on your position. This race is eight days, uh, we just done one stage, it's a uh, very, very long still to go. <laughs> and it was super hot up there and that's, that climb is ridiculously steep, do you think the back markers are going to struggle? Absolutely, it is so hot out there, I think, yeah, if you don't pace and you don't manage the heat, I mean, we had ice water we poured over ourselves, we had ice socks, so... Yeah, I just really hope the guys are pacing themselves and they don't struggle too much with the heat. Go get some more ice. Yeah, those, those black guys, I'm really worried about them. No, it's, it's absolutely boiling and it's just getting hotter. So really well done to everyone who conquers this, this stage already. Yeah? It's very tough. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, they're good spirits, aren't they? Uh, Amy Wakefield and uh, Ariane Luti, uh, very... Um, uh, philosophical about uh, what you know, can happen and does happen in uh, mountain bike stage racing and they're dealing with it uh, very very well and they look to the positive they look to one of the key factors of the race was that they watched mm. their pacing early on in the race now we saw from the profile that the king's climb that uh, early climb really in the first uh, 10 kilometers uh, was an absolute uh, killer for the riders and they kept within themselves they were in fifth spot which is way way below what you would expect them to be. You'd expect that uh, riders of that caliper would be a little bit further ahead and they just took it uh, just took it a little bit easier and then were able to come forward. And you see here the big losers of the day are Team BMC Mountain Bike Racing. They have lost over 10 minutes today. Pauline Ferrer, Provo and Robin de Groot. Uh, a little fist pump to get them across the line after what has been a very tolerant day for the uh, BMC MTB pair. So uh, sadly for them, they won't be in the leader's jerseys uh, tomorrow, but they will have a story to tell, I'm sure, as well, about how things unfolded today. They were remarkable yesterday, and uh, today, well, a different... Uh, a kettle of fish all together for them. Well, it's the first time in a very long while that we've seen we've seen the the leaders' jerseys change shoulders after the prologue before, but it's the first time in a long time that we've seen it happen in both the men's and the women's categories. 
usually we see uh, the women's or at least one of the categories taking it all the way through but uh, it's unusual to see such a turnaround so early in the race in both categories and as we said it's still very much wide open it will be interesting to see or to hear from these two women uh, what exactly how they felt out there and and where they felt that uh, they were struggling uh, clearly they have had a very hard day out we didn't see too much of them uh, throughout the stage uh, but i'm it could be that one of them is feeling really, really tired, and uh, that's the reason why. That's one of the best sights you'll see here at uh, the Absa Cape Epic. Pauline Ferrer-Provo reaching in and taking out all the empty wrappers and all the gel uh, packets out from under her shirt and uh, handing them over to her Swanya. Uh, that's what mountain bikers do. They don't throw it on the trail. <laughs> they keep it with them. That's... Uh, Excellent, but what a day for Pauline ferrand Provo! her first big marathon stage at the uh, Absa Cape Epic and uh, still smiling, which is all good. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a journey. It's a, it's a long, long journey. Val de Vie is in Pal. It's, uh, well, as the crow flies, no more than 40 or 50 kilometers from us here, but uh, it, is <laughs> it is a long way on a mountain bike. And today, when the route went round to Dornier at the saddle, there were no more there than uh, perhaps uh, 10 kilometers from uh, the finish at Stellenbosch, which is where they'll be on next Saturday. But they've got a long way to go to Greaton over the mountains the other direction uh, tomorrow to get there. And that's uh, what they all know, these riders. They know there's uh, plenty more time and kilometers in which to claw back uh, lost uh, advantages. Let's go to uh, the uh, uh, BMC MTB team with Jazz. Robin, Pauline, did it feel a little bit like you had the, the target on your back on the way out this morning? Um, we tried not to take the pressure. Definitely having the orange jersey does add pressure for sure. And we didn't really actually want that for this race. Um, the objective is for Pauline to prepare for a cross-country season later this year. And for me, it's to finish off with an awesome partner. So... Um, there was a bit of pressure for sure and uh, we flew yesterday but uh, today um, we had some tough moments um, but we fought through, we never gave up and uh, I think Pauline definitely had a taste of the epic for sure. Was that a, a five hour cross country effort? Uh, I think it was good for uh, an hour and a half but yeah after the steep, uh, in the steep climb I completely blew up and yeah I had good bump and uh, I didn't feel so well, so I had to stop a bit. So Robin has to wait for me. So yeah, <laughs> I'm a bit like uh, disappointed to just for her because for me I gave my uh, maximum, so I don't have to yeah to regret anything or so we'll have other days. <laughs> how do you how do you regroup and remotivate uh, ahead of tomorrow? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a taste of what's ahead, definitely. So um, definitely re need to refuel. And uh, no, it's not as if our spirits are down. Um, I think both of us live with a very positive kind of uh, way. And um, you just keep it in the biggest scheme of life. And we keep going. And some beautiful single track out there. I mean, were there some enjoyable moments? Yeah, it was so nice. It was like, uh, yeah, I've after the climb was like super nice to have like single and downhill, so I think I never enjoy so much to to go down. Go and rest up and uh, ready for tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, positive mindset, and uh, I think you know Pauline was looking for an experienced rider to to uh, take her on her first Absa Cape Epic journey, and today was. Uh, the vindication of that decision to have uh, a rider of, uh, of Robin's experience and uh, composure and, and, and demeanor um, to just keep her calm. And uh, when she said she, she ex completely blew up going up uh, the saddle climb there, <laughs> Robin's there to say, don't worry, we'll, we'll get there, don't, don't, don't panic. It makes all the difference to have that kind of uh, mm. partnership in a, in a race like that. If you don't have the morale, you can forget about it. It means uh, everything. And uh, yeah, for Pauline, she really has a, a good, strong and experienced partner. Um, and I'm sure, I have a feeling we haven't seen the last of this team oh yet no. uh, because it will change. I mean, right now you can see Pauline was like, Oof, okay, this is, she got a proper taste of what this is all about, but it will change and they will find their feet again. So more to come from, from this team, I'm sure.
And um, Robin de Groot summarized it perfectly in the beginning, quite understatedly said that Pauline got a taste of the epic. Mm -hmm. And uh, no doubt that uh, Robin de Groot has had her tastes of the epic and the good days and the bad days. And that's what it's really all about. And of course, we heard the real story from Pauline's, uh, from, from the words from uh, Pauline where uh, she completely blew up. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah, just really interesting how, um, how Robin de Groot summarized that in It's the Epic. That's what happens. Yep, absolutely. Welcome to it. Uh, there's a man who's done this race before and a, f a bit more, Rian Mansa. Uh, he's an extraordinary adventurer, an extreme uh, adventurer, ridden around uh, the entire African continent, paddled uh, Canoes around Madagascar and ridden the Epsa Cape Epic and paddled uh, across the Atlantic as well. Well, it is uh, a beautiful place to be here at uh, Lawrenceford and uh, it's the venue for stage one of the Epsa Cape Epic and it's delivered uh, high drama and excitement all the way around. It's been a wonderful uh, entertainment. New leaders in both the men's and women's races will go into stage two of that journey to uh, Greaton tomorrow. Big, big marathon stage tomorrow. Uh, Sian Machoya and uh, Philemon Sabona roll across to complete their stage one. It doesn't tell you uh, the real story, that picture, because as every rider will attest to, it is brutally hot out there. And you heard Ariane expressing some concern for the back end of the field. We're going to spend uh, uh, eight, nine hours out there today. And in that bowl of uh, the Helderberg, there's no wind. You can see those trees dead still there. There's nowhere to hide. Mm, and it's uh, really one of those factors that is one of the biggest factors in this race. It's not only the effort on the bike, it's handling everything that this th experience uh, offers you. And dealing with the heat is definitely one of them. Yep, it's one of those things some people can deal with and uh, some can't. It's a very difficult thing to prepare with. You've talked about preparing for it and, and there are things you can do when you mm. are in the northern hemisphere or in the colder climes. But uh, ultimately, when you get out here, there is, it, it's, it's so different. It is so extreme. No matter how well you prepared, it, uh, it will help. Um, but to sit out there in this uh, for four, five, six, seven, eight hours, nine hours for some, it uh, is going to test every faculty. Mm, oh, yeah, indeed. And it's true for a lot of the riders coming from overseas. This is quite a shock to the system. Yeah. And it helps kind of coming if you have the opportunity. Not everybody has that, had that. Uh, but uh, to come here to acclimatize, to get the, the body used to the temperatures. There are alternative ways you can, you can prepare at, uh, at home. We'll touch on that later. This is the uh, women's elite uh, start rolling away from uh, Lawrenceford here in the cool of the shade ahead of the uh, brutal heat that is uh, to come. Uh, Baron Prevo and uh, De Groot in the uh, Chivita Orange uh, leaders' jerseys. And uh, looking across at them were the 91 Songo specialized pair, Gomez Villafan and uh, Haley Batten as they rolled away at uh, a sedate pace because they knew things were going to get hot very, very soon because the first real challenge was the King's Climb. Uh, up and out of the Helderberg Basin here that would take them th on Lawrenceford and then through Helderberg Nature Reserve and then up to uh, the uh, Kingscliff Farm and then uh, Cliffview Farm and plenty more as they start to climb up here. And uh, we've heard already from uh, Ariane Luthi and Amy Wakefield about their tactics for today. Sit back, let the race go, ride to, to your numbers. And it takes that you can you can control yourself and not get a, uh, too much affected by what you see happening around you and saying okay we know we know exactly what numbers to stick to what power to to produce up this climb in order to not blow up and it actually turned out to be the perfect strategy of course they were hit by bad luck but they actually physically on the bike they did it so well and that's why they were so upbeat after the stage I think they knew they had, their plan had worked no question about it uh, and you got the sense there this is the uh, picture of that uh, Amy said that uh, Ariane looks after the pacing and I think it took a, a huge uh, step for Amy to hand that over to Ariane. She knows she's experienced, but, uh, but it still takes some steps. But, but they're going up the road. Mm. Don't worry, I've got this under control. Stay with me. 
Yes. And that just shows what it means to have the experience from years and years and so many Cape Epics. And that's exactly what uh, Ariane has. It's like, I know what I can do. I know what we should do as a team. And we just have a plan that stick to it. I know it works. And you're having that confidence, you know, it's impressive. This is the group uh, up ahead, uh, and, uh, Marie Rabi and uh, Hayley Preen at the back of this, and uh, Robin de Groot there in the orange jersey, and uh, just ahead of her was uh, Pauline Ferran Prevost as they got to grips with this uh, very, very tough uh, King's uh, climb. It really is a, a, a tough challenge early on the day. Well, certainly so early on in the day when the legs are actually quite fresh and that's the tempting thing. It really takes a lot of restraint not to follow the very fastest riders up a climb like this. And just to take it easy, and you can see that uh, the private client holdings perhaps maybe burnt a few matches on that section there, staying with, uh, with the very front riders and uh, didn't serve them well later on in the day. And, uh, so talking of... Uh, Pacing themselves on the climb, we saw earlier on that 91 Songo specialized Sofia Gomez Villafana struggling on that uh, saddle climb, that really tricky, super steep climb that was to be the decisive climb of the day. And uh, that was the moment that uh, they were caught by the uh, Simtek ZA team of Ariane Luti and Amy Wakefield. But riding it out, uh, so many, uh, as we saw later, so many walking out up here, but they uh, rode it out. Amazing. Uh, uh, ability and uh, determination to to uh, ride it out. Very very tough uh, climb indeed, and one that uh, they would not. Uh, very few people would have ever ridden before. Exactly, and you can see how we saw uh, caught glimpses of Haley just like literally with her nose like one centimeter over her handlebar just to keep that front end down. That's how steep it was, sweeping over the uh, saddle and down into uh, the Lawrence foot. Uh, Valley. It was Ariane Luti and Amy Wakefield who had the lead going around uh, the uh, perimeter of the valley with uh, Sofia Gomez Villafan and Hayley Batten uh, behind them. And for all money, it looked as this pair were riding supremely well, gelling well, and uh, sharing the workload uh, very impressively. And likewise, here they settled down into a nice uh, routine and uh, Looking, looking impressive, knowing that uh, the orange leaders jerseys were now well behind them. But, uh, Luti and uh, Wakefield doing an excellent job in uh, drawing back time lost yesterday. And they didn't lose a lot uh, of time, but they knew if they had a good solid day today, they'd be in the picture. And uh, they continued to ride with uh, really good skill and uh, pacing all the way around until yeah. this. Well, they did admit that they were, that Ari and Luti were saying that she was just a little heavy on her bike and uh, pinch flat over some rocks. And that was the cause of it. And of course, it plagued them for the rest of the stage uh, before they got a chance to change that wheel. Then interesting there, are we still in first? She was calling there, wanting to know, because uh, what's well, interesting, they were fixing the, the, the puncture and they perhaps didn't notice anyone going past them, I don't know, but uh, they by then it weren't sure whether they were, they were leading. Well, as it transpired, uh, they uh, didn't hold on to that lead because here uh, we saw the, uh, uh, the 91 Songo Specialized team of Hayley Batten and Sofia Gomez Villafan open up a lead of just over a minute and they just increased that as they closed in on home, although Hayley Batten said their, that last 10 kilometers just wouldn't end. I know that feeling for sure, <laughs> after such a long day out, and you see that 10k sign and you're like, mm, mm, but I'm done now, but somehow you still make it because that finish line feeling is, is, is good, especially when like this, you know that you're in front and you're about to stay, take the stage win. Four hours and 50 minutes of superb riding by the 91 Songo Specialized team gave them the stage win in a very impressive fashion for uh, Hayley Batten and Sofia Gomez Villafan, the American and the Argentine stage winners here on stage one at Lawrenceford. And uh, following them home, not far behind, were Amy Wakefield on the front here and Ariane Luti of Simtek ZA. One minute and 49 seconds after a truly fantastic day on the bike. One, d one uh, mechanical did cost them. They weren't able to uh, successfully uh, Reinflate that time, had to uh, stop a couple of times to do that. Candice Dill and Mariska Strauss, 3 minutes and 42 seconds they lost today for Faces Roller, the uh, leaders in the African jersey. Their race is 
it's very much uh, alive and well in the chase for the overall here. They uh, perhaps will feel that uh, they had nicely positioned. Three minutes uh, 42 they lost today. Uh, three minutes down overall, and they'll feel that uh, they're in the right place. Not too much pressure on them. They're not carrying the, the responsibility of the leaders' jerseys yet, and there's plenty of stages still to come to, uh, to pull it back. And, of course, we'll see very soon the official GC standings. We've seen the stage results, and we'll see the official GC standings. And by our calculations, that'll be a complete and perfect flip over from the uh, leaders yesterday. And the leaders uh, going into today will drop down to fourth spot, and uh, the fourth spot team will go into first. And likewise with second and third. Second and third will swap over as well. So that's just by our count. We're still waiting for the official results. And we'll see in a few moments. Yeah, it has been uh, a roller coaster day of note here at the Absa Cape Epic uh, in uh, 2022 with uh, a myriad of changes, not only in these categories. I've noticed there's been a change in the Masters as well. I think Carl Platt and uh, his partner, the legendary uh, Carl Platt, Christoph Sazer pair, I think took the win in the Masters today. They didn't win it yesterday, but uh, they are uh, certainly in, in the mix there. So. Yep, plenty of change on a dramatic day, the Absa Cape Epic, for all concerned. We wait for the uh, podium presentation in the uh, women's race. That'll take place uh, very shortly. But in, in my eyes, it's still quite uh, an open race yeah. uh, towards the front of the race. We saw both Simtech uh, South Africa and 91 Cycle Specialized having really good days today. One team str uh, was uh, yeah, dealing with issues, though. Yeah, they were. Just a, a look here is the uh, podium presentation. Uh, Mariska Strauss, uh, Candice Zill of Faces Roller in third place today. And as uh, you were talking about now, I think they'd be yeah, fairly pleased with uh, their position at the moment. And Susan Zara and Luti and Amy Wakefield, uh, Simtech South Africa, Simtech ZA in second place today. But they'll feel uh, that they've had a really, really good day by the uh, mechanical issues they had with the puncture. And 91 uh, Songo specialized Hayley Batten and uh, Sophia Gomez Villafan taking the stage win in uh, four hours, 50 minutes today. Hayley was looking as though she wanted to shake the champagne there, I think, but it's uh, a bottle of wonderful Lawrence Hood wine, so don't. Uh, uh, do that, savour it and celebrate with it. Uh, the podium from uh, today's uh, CM.com women's race. And it's these uh, new stage winners and new overall uh, leaders as well in the Chivita Orange uh, leaders jerseys in the uh, CM.com women's race. Yes, we saw the uh, top two teams on the podium there. They will both be taking confidence out of this race because of course it's all about firepower and, uh, and, what you, and how you can control the circumstances and when it comes to firepower it's clear that Simtech ZA is on it. They know exactly how to pace, their lessons have been learned and they've, they've learned that their initial plan, their strategy does work and um, of course 91 Songo Specialized will be their spirits will be buoyed by that win and of course by the looks of it they look to take over that leader's jersey well there they are suspended in that uh, leader's jersey Hayley Batten and uh, Sophia Gomez Villafan carrying on the legacy of uh, the uh, 91 Songo specialized incredible record here at the Absa Cape Epic two more women wearing the uh, leaders' jerseys to add to an uh, incredible list of uh, superstars who've worn it over the years uh, here at the Epic. Well, there must be a box somewhere in team headquarters at the service course of all of those of all of those leaders' jerseys. There must be a... a I think there's a container. There must be a, a large box. room. <laughs> You've got a few. Uh, I got a few, yeah. <laughs> but uh, actually what we do with those leader jerseys is uh, because they're quite unique. Um, as, as a gesture to our staff, we kind of, if we have enough, we would kind of give them to our staff as a as a nice little memory of the the adventure we had together. Wonderful. Here. But you do keep 
keep uh, keep a few, don't you? Yeah, I do. Good. Yeah, in my trophy box. There they are. They are special. They are very, very special, unique uh, jerseys. The leaders' jerseys here at the uh, Absa Cape Epic. Well, the racing is uh, at the sharp end uh, is not done in, in many ways because there's still lots of races out there. But uh, today's stage has delivered the most incredible drama and excitement. Haley Batten and uh, Sofia Gomez Villafan, then the uh, winners of stage one in the CM.com women's category, ahead of Ariane Lutian, Amy Wakefield, the Simtech ZA, and Candice Mill and Riska Strauss in third place, the leaders in the Absa African jersey. The leaders going into the stage, Pauline Ferran Provo and Robin de Kruert lost 10 minutes and 45 seconds. And uh, Marie Rabi and uh, Haley Preen of Private Client Holdings are doing a great job by the South African pair in the fifth place today. The overall classification looks like this. Uh, Batten and uh, Gomez Villefan now a minute and 45 ahead of Lutian Wakefield. 2.53 back to Lillen Strauss. It's all up uh, for the taking there. There's uh, nothing between those teams considering there's six stages still to go. Ferran Prevo and De Groot haven't ruled themselves out and no one should because they are proven winners and real champions and uh, they will be back. Rabi and Preen will 22 minutes and 28 seconds back. Uh, they are perhaps uh, a little bit too far back but uh, really holding their own in some very exalted company here. Fantastic list of riders there, and uh, it really is completely wide open. As we look at the men, and uh, the this is the stage one results that we saw. We saw a fantastic performance from Canyon Northwave, and uh, distancing Becking and Diaz sort of midway through the stage, and um, Rabensteiner and Alaman really coming into their own in the latter half of the stage uh, to take that final spot on the podium for today's stage. Marot and Swenson were in the mix and then uh, they took uh, a few uh, hits late on in the stage. Uh, young Orr and Gesmeyer, William Perini Factory, they've had a good day as well. Bontekoninger de Toy, the uh, South Africans are the new leaders in the Apps African jerseys after an excellent day for the insect science pair. But uh, down there in 12th position, the big losers today, Matt Beers and Chris Plevins of Toyota 91 Specialized. Nine minutes and 21 seconds. The lights went out in uh, Matt Beers today, I'm afraid. And uh, he will take a lot of recovery and uh, get back on the bike tomorrow. He never gave up today. The general classification, five minutes and four seconds. Uh, Sierwalt and Stosek have over the buff Megamo pair of Hans Becking and Jose Diaz with uh, Rot and Svensson. Well, just 53 seconds further back. The race is going to be red hot uh, all the way down to uh, even seventh place, uh, Beers and Blevins. Uh, there and the, we know what they've got uh, when uh, things go their way can be a real danger. Schurter and Foster, more problems for them today, but still less than nine minutes down. And uh, as uh, Neil pointed out a short while ago, down to ninth place, less than nine minutes between the top nine with six days to go, everything to play for. It's still wide open, at least for the podium. There's still covered three coveted spots on the podium in the Valdevi uh, grand finale. And uh, definitely all is not lost for the Swiss team. Yeah, you don't want to talk about uh, mishaps and uh, problems, but that is the nature of the sport and of the event. They happen. So stage one in the NTT Masters, uh, Karl Platt and Christoph Sauser, four hours, 26.59 to take the win. The legends, Songo 91 epic legends, 10 wins between them, five each. And uh, they have taken the victory by 9 minutes and 20 seconds over Fit to Bike Natural Berry with uh, Restonix, uh, Craig Uriah and Andrew Divinage in third place today. Yeah, some huge gaps there and uh, Miguel Martinez uh, and, um, and Pirazzoli were 23 minutes back in fourth spot so significantly they lost huge amounts of time today and their hopes of overall uh, have been dashed. Yeah, they were the uh, leaders yesterday. Platt and Sousa then have a nine and a half minute lead overall and uh, nearly 15 minutes back to Craig Uriah and Andrew Divinage. Right, uh, it's a category that uh, sees some uh, pretty significant riders. In fact, uh, the gold, silver and bronze medalists from the very first Olympic mountain bike uh, uh, race in Atlanta are all in the the mix the here. Race. Yeah. So the uh, Masters and the Grand Masters yep. category. Yep. Art Brenchens, uh, Miguel Martinez, Thomas Frischnecht, 
Christoph Sauz is a medalist, of course, a couple of times over. So, yep, plenty of uh, quality here. No question about it. The Absa Cape Epic uh, attracts the best riders in the world who want to win this race, whether they're racing at elite level or whether they're racing at masters or grandmasters level. And, of course, it attracts uh, the most uh, uh, committed and prepared amateurs who aspire to uh, roll across the finish line at uh, the grand finale in Val de Vie. But in order to get there, they've got to tick off every single tough, hard day. Today is as tough as they get today out in this heat. We are nearing the end of our rather comfortable few hours in an air-conditioned commentary box at the finish here. We're about to head out into the heat and get a feel of what it's really like there. But a tough day for the riders out there today, uh, Annika. Definitely. Stage one is always uh, very tough because that's kind of the first real introduction to what this race is about. The prologue, you're still relatively fresh, but here on stage one, it really, you, you get a taste of what this is. And tomorrow you get a, another little uh, a course on this uh, varied menu. It is a 123 kilometer stage from Lawrenceford Wine Estate to Jelanskloof in Great, just outside Greaton. The portage up the Hantu Pass is a significant factor tomorrow. No riding up there. They have to run up an old ox wagon pass uh, that still carries the indentations from the ox wagon that uh, went up and down that pass years and years ago. Oak Valley and Paul Clue will deliver great enjoyment on those single tracks. And then they head across and around uh, down through uh, Vautrefi. Jacques climb is a seriously challenging climb as they go up the Fundestel Pass and uh, then the drag out on some long and uh, open roads before getting into the uh, Greaton District and into Ilanskloof. For the second time we're visiting Ilanskloof and uh, it'll complete another monumental day on this uh, incredible event that is the Absa Cape Epic. The race that measures all. Stage 2, 123 kilometers, 2,350 meters of climbing awaits for these riders, another day to challenge them all. So that's uh, what it's been like and what it is like here at uh, Lawrenceford. We hope you've enjoyed our coverage. Remember, we've got a highlights uh, package of the entire day's uh, racing that uh, will be delivered to your screens wherever they are all over the world. So we hope you'll enjoy that later on uh, today. But uh, from uh, an extraordinary day one, uh, stage one, uh, uh, Annika, your final thoughts on what has been an amazing day today? Yeah, it really delivered everything we were hoping for. We saw a lot of drama uh, in a lot of the races. Everything was all of a sudden, you know, up in the air and landed in different places. Um, and we're still up for a very good week. We saw a lot of teams really starting to carry a lot of momentum now. Well, it's uh, about recovery tonight and to today, isn't it, uh, Neil? Well, we talked about the Queen stage, and we've talked about it in previous years. And the Queen stage is normally, well, is generally regarded as the hardest. It's the big, the big day out, and it's uh, been seen in, in in previous editions in the latter half of the week, or very rarely. In fact, I don't think ever it's been called the Queen stage for the first stage. But today's stage is known as the Queen stage, and it certainly showed its uh, showed exactly why. It uh, wore the crown with pride today, that's for sure. So uh, it's delivered great drama. Hope you've enjoyed it. Stay with us uh, through the week as we bring you more from the 2022 Absa Cape Epic from Neil Gardner, Anna Galangfil and myself. Until tomorrow, goodbye. <laughs>